<laughs> Yo. I, I, I thought you I thought you were frozen for a second. <laughs> I thought you were frozen for a second. I was like, oh, that would have been the worst intro ever if I did that and you were frozen. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 112, Jump Street Podcast. And we, as always, we have a very special guest today. In, Not as uh, always, but as dear, usual. As usual, as always, our dear friend, Joey Lunger. So please, if you're watching us live, do all the things that I please ask and suggest and try to encourage you to do every week. Go to our Facebook, give us a like, go to our YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. So when we have a show, you get alert on your phone, you can stop what you're doing and check us out. Um, please um, comment, share the video, all these interactions help with us. We have on iTunes, you can give us a five-star rating if you like what you hear, you can give us a review. All these reviews really help with the algorithm and boost us up to the top. So um, yes, we really like that. Also, we have a Patreon. For as little as $3 a month, you can become a member of our Patreon community. We're putting out new content. We do trick tips. They're called inside outs. We have three pieces. We have section reviews. Um, we have all kinds of new stuff we're trying to add as well. We so just put your that out. inside out out, the zero fish. Yep, we, we just put ours up. I did a, a inside out, a how to on a zero spinali fish which is uh, one of my favorite tricks. I've been doing it for a long time, so I thought it would be cool if we if we got into that and we had some fun making it. And uh, some people checked it out and they said they really enjoyed it and it was helpful for them. There was so one please. particular tip that people found extremely helpful. I won't say what it is, but if you're a Patreon member, you can see. If not, become a Patreon member and check it out. Learn something from the man himself, Billy O'Neill. And you know, you know, you get these going by. Austin's done some and we're going to try to even get some other people involved in it. You know, it would be cool to... Uh, yeah, I was already thinking about some other people. I would like someone to do a toe roll because I'm trying to get the trick tip on the toe roll. I've been really trying to, I've been really trying to learn it recently. Like, and I'm really committing myself to this year. This year, I'm I'm gonna get toe rolls. Because, yeah, that insecure uh, that, about your toe rolls, huh? I'm not great with it. I can't do it too long. My my balance isn't good. And it's just a, such a big part of skating. Now I'm trying to get in it, but that's all beside the point. Um, <laughs> that is the end of my spiel. Please follow us on those things and um, check us out. That was good. I, then we went jumped right into that spiel. I like that one. Right into it. I've right never done it. it straight into it, but it felt natural. That's why I didn't say anything. I just let it go. You look like you were doing your thing. But just how you jumped into that, we'll jump into the WTF of the week. We have a WTF all the way from Russia. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Russia? Yep. Savoysin in Russia. I think he's in Krasnoyarsk, if I'm not mistaken. With a solar backy. He does a solar backflip like it's a, a front side. Yeah. Savoyce and Ilya. And catch out his um, dance moves too on his Instagram. Oh, yeah. Writing. We were just talking about that with Joey. It, that <laughs> is extremely impressive. He's like uh, done like a Russian traditional dance for like something like 13 years. And he's just incredible. And he did something on his skates where he was where he was doing it like his arms were crossed. And he was yeah. like putting the feet up <laughs> back and forth. Um, looked like a serious core workout. That's so, awesome. Shout out to Savoyston. Yeah, that was really cool. Hey, always coming through with the sick clips. He's like another uh, tree tree kind of guy where he just, oh, his whole Instagram feed is just full of WTFs. Like everything is just like flip to this, some weird bendy leg maneuver. It's super interesting. So definitely check him out. Give him a follow on Instagram if you haven't. Yeah. Um, we also have a sponsor for this episode. Do we not? We do have a sponsor for this episode. You are correct. Yes. Blank is our sponsor. And Blank has been doing a ton of great stuff in skating. Their team is amazing. Um, we saw them this past a couple weekends ago at the Blade Cup. Tom Heiser, we had an episode with him with Jump Street, uh, episode 111. So check that out. We get into everything that's going on with Blank. But um, for now, check out this ad um, by Blank. Always good to see some Sven Bokeris clips. Always. What a legend. What a legend. He just it's posted just... today some some quote throwaway clips or, or whatever, like leftovers maybe from like plastic pushers maybe, but there was nothing throwaway about them at all. Insane. Yeah, uh, we watched his part in Plastic Pushers too the other day. 
so good uh, it's crazy it's crazy just everything he can do he like the vert the street everything he's just been doing it for like 20 25 years like mm-hmm. in the spotlight just still skating at the highest level so huge shout out to him that guy is holding it down he's a real. legend he's a living legend and you shout out to blank um our sponsor for this episode definitely check out the new sean keen skate uh speaking so, of um, blank in the last weekend we just did a few episodes from bleeding cup uh if anyone missed it episodes 109 110 and 111 we did uh for our blading cup marathon all of them superb spectacular i might say so myself uh super interesting mm-hmm. people we have yandrell on we had tom heiser like you said before uh uh hayden 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 ball was on and it was just like each of them like boom one after another killing it each one gems so if you yeah. haven't seen that already check them out and the blading cup itself was awesome that went yeah, off I mean, as usual it was incredible. I mean, the, the podcasts were awesome. 109, 110, 111. We had, yeah, like you said, we had Hayden, uh, Yandrell, and um, Tom Heiser. And each one was just so really like good and so different. Like, yeah. everyone was such a different person, but each story was so good. So, if you haven't seen those, I really recommend checking them out because I was uh, really enjoying that experience a lot. Uh, it was really cool. And yeah, the Blade Cup weekend itself was amazing. Such a great turnout. You saw so many like the old guys there, like the OGs. I saw Rollins and Rivera there, yeah. Tyler Shields, Brian, Brian Smith, Bone Smith. Yeah, you know? fuck, crazy. Yeah, there was everyone was there, and um, you know, Randy was there skating. It was like killing it. It was like I was back. I was like I was a kid again seeing some of these guys. But then there were all the new faces and all the new kids out, and like yeah. some of like the guys my age, like Stockwell and everyone like that. And it was just good to see everyone out and skating and ripping. Um, yeah, John Julio threw a hell of an event, and ten year anniversary. It seemed like the biggest one yet, mm-hmm. and uh, it just seems like a really good feeling and a good time for blading yeah i think that was the first if i'm not mistaken the first like real major skate event in the states at least since covid i mean there was like other like the bpso and windy city ride and stuff like that but i think like the blading cup was like the big one so this is like the first one that everyone finally got a chance to go out to and attend and unfortunately some of the europeans and international people couldn't go because of travel restrictions but there was still a huge turnout like you said probably one of the biggest if not the biggest the the day saturday was like the open and it was just like all day long. So many people, it was like 115 people entered. And it was just heat after heat after heat. And it was so sick to see everybody going in. And definitely a huge shout out to John Julio for putting that together, uh, throwing it down year after year for 10 years. It's definitely awesome to see. And I'm just happy that I'm able to attend stuff like that every year. Yeah, no, it was, everything was incredible from the open, the juniors, um, the, the ladies, the mm-hmm. morning of on Sunday was just incredible as well. And uh, yeah, the the pros on on Sunday was really good. One incredible competition. Huge shout out to the winners too, uh, Montre and John Bellino and David Sizemore, and everyone in the finals put on a show. Alex Broscow, um, Anthony Marchione, uh, Damon Franklin absolutely killed it. So I love watching Damon's case. Yeah, he just brings I say it so all much time. energy. So, yeah, yeah. So that was <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that was an incredible event, and super pumped for that. Um, We're going to get to our guests soon, but first, I wanted to make an announcement. We're doing a premiere for the Mesmer, um, the new Mesmer video, Rising. There's a premiere on the, the, a flyer on our Instagram at Mesmer Skates, but we're doing a premiere in Amsterdam on Friday, if you live in Amsterdam, or in Spain, Barcelona on Saturday. There's one in Long Beach, California on Sunday, and if you're not around any of those, we're doing a premiere live on Jump Street at... 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, which is 9 p.m. Pacific time. No, and 9 a.m. 9 a.m. <laughs> and then it would be, and then it would be, I guess, 5 p.m. in, which is 1700 hours in England. It's too and much 1800 math. 1800 hours <laughs> in Spain, in Spain and uh, what time Italy is that in Japan? In France. What time is that in Japan? I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. But what about so Bangladesh? Bang- See, for, for all our Bangladesh <laughs> audience waiting for the new Mesmer edit to drop. If you're so, watching yeah. from Bang- Bangladesh, let us know, by the way. Sorry, Billy. Please. No, no. If you're watching from Bangladesh or Azerbaijan or anywhere, anywhere that's unique, we want to know where you're watching from. Anywhere you're watching from, say where you're watching from. Yeah. But we do have the premiere for um, that video coming out this weekend. I'm hyped you can on see it. see live on those places. Check our flyer. And we're, place- we're going to play it on uh, Jump Street Live, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to check that out, please check that out. I think it's a really good video. <laughs> and I think uh, Mark did a fantastic job as well as everyone who was involved in it. So looking forward to showing that to everyone. 
I can't wait to see that. It's going to be awesome. I love that you're premiering it like that, too. It's going to be really cool. I wish I could attend one of those. Um, obviously, I can't, but we got that Jump Street premiere, the worldwide premiere online. So 12 p.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time right here on Jump Street Podcast on YouTube. Check it Sick. out. Um, all right. Should we get to our very special guest? Yes, we should get to our very special guest. Ooh, everybody, please put your hands together for Mr. Joey Lunger. There, there he is. is. Hey, Joey. Hey, how are you? Good, man. Um, right off the bat, next time we skate, I'll teach you to toe roll. <laughs> Yo, please, dude. I was actually like, you know what it is? No one takes the time with me because like, I'll be skating with like my buddies and uh, I'll be like, man, you know, I can't toe roll. And like, I'm trying to toe roll like at the skate park or something. And that's like my little call for help. Like, <laughs> You know, like a little nudge, like, like I, I just wish I could tow roll, guys, you know, and, and John's like, it's easy, just do it. And then he'll just <laughs> do it. And I'm like, nice, man. And then like, I'll just no, try it like three more times by myself. And it's just like, I just like go into the corner and I have soul grind something. You know? <laughs> I think the key is learning to do it stationary. I like was trying balance. to learn it with the, with the two toes first, right? So I was rolling around on two toes, toes, and then I was like pulling the other one up, and I was like, "Ooh, okay." I'm like, "I'm." I guess getting that's a good that. way. Yeah. So, yeah. but the stationary—that's that's a good idea. How are your yeah. heroes, Billy? I got a hero, but no toes. But also, really? I, I was weirding the guys out because, um, they're like, "Oh, you don't." toe roll with your, or hero with your like natural foot like your i guess your macchio foot so i do most yeah, of my stuff on my stagger. right foot so i do it on do my it left on, you do it on your stagger like the way you royale a lot of people do it like that i don't do hmm. i do it on the opposite foot I, I never thought about that before but i don't do it on my natural me neither single foot i just realized that your strong foot yeah i don't do it on my strong foot <laughs> strong so, foot <laughs> yeah so but it's, it's sure I, I don't know. So, so. A lot of people are that way. Hmm. I mean, that's what John was saying. Though. Yeah, John was like, maybe that's why you can't do it because you're not doing it on the right foot. And I, and then I tried on the other foot and. <sighs> no bueno. We got to go skate. What's up with this week? Are we going to go skate this Saturday? Uh, yeah, I'll let you know <laughs> what the deal is for Saturday. You put uh, him on the spot right now. No, uh. Don't worry about it. We'll talk. About okay, okay. But yeah, let's do this inside out toe roll with Joey Lunger. Oh, that'd be nice. Yo, let's do it. Yo, <laughs> toe rolls. Yeah, but you know, it, 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 toe to roll. Yeah, it so incredible. That's one of the best clips I've seen in a long time. Yes, yes. I just saw that recent. Like I was, I was really shocked. That was really good. So yeah, the levels of control. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's like funny, like when you when you've been skating for like so long and you get like comfortable with like certain tricks and then like trying something new um, or new to you, you like make yourself like a rookie again. And that's like so important in like the learning process and in the fun process of it all. But I got to say, and, and, I, and I have fun like doing that, like doing things I'm uncomfortable with, like trying like uh, like my switch foot more often than not, or just like looking over like other shoulders or trying to go in like different spinning ways. And you could like, okay, cool. Like I'm, I'm new here, but I'm not like embarrassing. The toe roll, I'm just like, man, like I can't get past the point of like, I'm, I'm really not like good at it. So um, I got to get to the point where I'm like respectable bad. So that's what I'm trying to get to. So I could, yeah, just learn properly. Yeah, the last time we were skating, you were ripping the left foot sole. It was nice <laughs> to see. And the left foot Royale. Yeah. Thank you. No, you know what? It, yeah, it's like my right knees um, start like having some problems with it. So I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Let's let's not not skate. Let's try to just use the other the other leg more. You know. That warms my heart. I love <laughs> yeah. watching people's yes. bitch. Yes. Thank you. Thank well, Joey, it's really freaking sweet to have you on this podcast. We've been um, many don't know, and maybe Austin might not, but me and you've been playing phone tag, trying to do this for a while, and like it's months. it's been. It's been it's been rough. We have different schedules. Yeah. Your your job, I guess, is like very sporadic when when you might have to work, and we have to, so it's like always a thing like that. And I think a lot of your free days are Austin's busy days because Austin does like the weekends like a lot and weddings. So happy to finally have you on. Um, 
and really curious to get to uh to know you and talk to you about a lot of stuff you know i know you fairly well but i'd like to dig in a little further um i know you're from new york long island and i remember seeing you from back in the day you know um so tell me how did you initially get into this thing that is skating did you have hockey roots as many others did or what was your first video how did we get in there okay so uh my grandma got me skates for like my ninth birthday, but I didn't really use them until I met this kid skating like a little curb. He, he was skating curb and uh, I was on a BMX bike and he let me borrow his K2 Nemesis. And oh, wow. from that point, I was hooked. And then I come to find out that there's a couple other kids in my area that were already skating around my age uh who all recently just got back into skating which is really sick to see like they all took a a hiatus but uh yeah i tried on a friend's pair of skates and got hooked yeah what what was your um first video the first video i saw Full was probably able out of the dark. Oh, <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a long time. Yeah, able out of the dark. Uh, That's a strange first, first one. It's a cool first one. <laughs> Random. Yeah, fucking awesome. Tori Trester section. Uh, Vinny Mitten. Uh, the Dunkel section at the end is so crazy. Did Frankie have a part? Frankie yeah, Frankie a did part. have a part. Wow, um, what a team. Yeah, it was a really sick team. I'm trying to think of their James St. Fours, I think. I James St. Hours, yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that sick of a team. It was before I was on, so just. That's right. Uh, That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, you skated those fucking things forever. I got so you much shit for those? skating those. Yeah, see, even like 15 years later, I still getting shit for those. I used to love those skates, yeah. I mean, those frames, yeah. They were so big and bulky, and that just allowed you to just slide on every single thing that you skated. Yeah, so, so that kid, the the nemesis that I tried on, had a pair of uh, Ables on it, and I was like, "Oh, that's how you can like Royale." But once I figured out how to lean on the skates, it was so sick. That, but yeah, I think it I, I think it was the diamond cut H block that really locked in the Royale. Yeah, know? it was a weird design, but it worked really well. And like the sidewalls were also angled, like triangles. So when you did set slides, it locked perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Giant. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like set slides were super easy too. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah. good. That was my yeah, first I, video. But then the first video I owned was Debt Riot, which had. Some- I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it was like a, I guess a Detroit like local video, had a JC Rowe section, uh, Dom Bambrick section as like a child, uh, Gary Murphy had a section. It was really awesome video. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's really that was the first video I owned. Those are really good so, skaters for a video that like I haven't heard of and Billy's never heard of either. That's like a sick lineup right there. No, I have. I have. Oh, you have heard of it? it? Okay, I, just, I never heard of it. By, by, the, by the way, he pronounced it. I didn't. I didn't get it at first, but I was like, oh yeah, yeah. D- d- like, I thought he said debt, like D E B T. Oh. Uh, right. Oh, debt. But yeah, yeah, but debt. Right, yeah, I seen that Detroit video. Debt right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a pretty nice gal. <laughs> <Debra. laughs> um. So yeah, um, I think we, we've we've talked about this before on a personal level briefly, but what was it like, you know, coming from Long Island skating and like skating in the city and like that whole uh, getting in there at that time? So for the first like probably five, four years of skating, I pretty much just stayed on Long Island. Uh, at the time, we had a really strong scene. Uh, we had some heavy hitters like Trevor Johnson and Bobby Rochelle, and then there was like both Sean Gra- uh, Gratalone and Sean G that were coming up. Uh, James Mandato, uh, but I stayed mostly with like that core group of kids that I was just talking about uh, that I grew up with. Uh, a kid, uh, Zeke Kabinsky, Tom Ancelari, 
Darren Shea. Uh, yeah, they all uh, – we stuck together for the most part. Um, and I would go to, like, Woodward. And we would go and skate the city briefly. But I didn't really get into the New York scene until I started going to college. Where'd you go to college? Uh, uh, I went to Hunter College for a little bit. And during that time, I lived in Astoria. So I then met, like, Mal Ashby and uh, Tad Labazetta. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, Alex Ryerson, those dudes. Uh, Jordan Baez, I had known through, like, some of those I and roll, I roll NY, sorry. Uh, yeah. It's been that long, huh? <laughs> it's a fucking mouthful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I like knew and was like friendly via the internet, but I lived pretty deep on Long Island, so it wasn't that easy for me to get into the city for like regular sessions. Expensive too to do that. Yeah, yeah. The, Were you out in Suffolk? Uh, yeah. Oof. I'm uh, like Patchog would be the easiest. Oh my choice. god. Yeah, that's like a. You said it's like thirty bucks each way to get into the city or something like that from out there. Yeah, I think it was twenty one when I was a kid. I don't Oof. know what it is now. Jeez, uh, that, you would tell me that's like not far from Greenpoint Skate Park, right? Or Greenport? It's about halfway from halfway. like the city. Yeah, because then you know, like the highway ends, and then you got to go on that like <laughs> two lane road. So it's a, in time, it's about halfway. That's how far you are. When the highway ends, you keep going. <laughs> have you ever been to Greenport Skate Park? I never have, no. Yeah, I have. That metal mini ramp is so sick. Is it still there? Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't know and that. It has a giant metal vert ramp, too. And what? That thing, yeah, you do not want to skate that in the summer. Oh, but yeah. It is, yeah, it gets brutally hot. But... The metal mini ramp is so fun. It's so fast and like, yeah. I didn't know there really was a vert in New York. Nice spine. Yeah, it's like all the way at the tip of Long Island. I've always wanted to uh, help. There's like a campground that's walking distance from the skate park. And I've always wanted to have like a camp out where we go to the skate park right after. And there's uh, the sound is walking distance as well and greenport breweries out there so anybody listening that's trying to do something like that uh hit me up that sounds good yeah, yeah um greenport that's like a crazy little town i don't know it really shocked me when i went there like we hung out there with some skater that lived out there and it was like it's like a town like in the middle of nowhere long island but all like the, it was like kind of gangster I think I remember that. Like all this like wild stuff happening over there and just me being really shocked about like it being super wild and like way out of the city, you know, I don't know. Did you have any experience like that? No, I mostly went with like my family. Like we would go camping out at that campground and yeah, nothing too wild happened. We were just camping and like go swimming. But then I, I, I think the first time I went to Greenport Skate Park, I had a scooter. I don't, I don't really <laughs> remember. So you used a scooter before blading? I mean, I fucked around on everything. I, like, raced BMX bikes. I fucked around on scooters. But, like, my first real love was snowboarding. Like, that's where, like, a lot of my vision comes from, I guess. Like, I still kind of, like, you know how, like, if you, like, learn a second language, you, like break everything down in your first language and then bring it over to the new one. Like snowboarding is my first language. You know, that actually makes a lot of sense now that you, I never knew that about you, but like seeing your skating style, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it feels like a very snowboarder kind of style, especially like with the long hair and kind of like looser clothes. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Very flowy. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, yeah, definitely love snowboarding uh i've been skiing in the last couple of years and uh that's been a huge influence on my skating uh especially just like watching what's happening in their culture uh insane yeah they're 
their tricks selection is insane. Like how technical they can get while being giant is very inspiring. Uh, also their use of hands and like they they call them butters, but like the way that they will like pivot on the ground and like press their skis is uh, very inspiring. That's cool, man. Like, um, you know, it's funny, like you always think like, uh, the similarities between skiing and, and blading or what they could have been. But I feel like in the last few years, like, um, they've really found like their own thing. Like I've had friends, like, I don't know much about skiing, but I, my, uh, one of like my good friends, uh, E money, rest in peace, E money, but shout he was like e big shout out E money, rest in peace, E money. But, but he, but he was big on uh, skiing like the last 10 years, you know, we were like, wow, like this guy's, but he was like showing like all like the, like the toe pick things, like the double toes and they're leaned out, bend all the way over, like the double heels or they'll switch up heel, like, and then to like uh toe on, on like a kink rail and huge monster stuff too. But they're doing all this other stuff. That's like really cool looking, like all this, like, um, like you said, technical and just like really good style stuff. So yeah, it's cool to, it's cool to draw inspiration from like those other areas, you know, because there's a lot going on there. Yeah especially like spot selection and like usage and uh like you said the like they'll like nolly or like ollie while on a like grind and i think you can like make those movements happen on skates like say you're in royale you can like pull your like wheels across the rail and then let yourself pop up and then get back onto it uh so that's like some of the inspiration I've been drawing. That's super cool. I, I, I picture like wizard skating when you mentioned all that stuff too, because I know with like the big four wheels or the big five wheel skates, you do those kind of movements as well. And I've heard people also make that reference too. Sean Keen though also said that too. He, cause he's a big skier, I believe, or snowboarder. I forget which one. Snowboarder. Snowboarder, yeah, but he, he influence, uses that influence in his skating and you definitely could see that in his skating as well as yours, Joey. So now that like it's all coming around like i picture the similarities in your skating and his skating also and snowboarding and skiing all together it all makes sense now yeah i i don't know like you, you kind of just get inspiration from the things that you're used to like people that play music get inspiration for skating from music i snowboard and ski and that's where i get some inspiration from i don't yeah, that's pretty much Sick. it. Yeah. Were there any? Are there any places to to snowboard or ski in Long Island? I was about to say that's a troop. <laughs> no. Uh, so me and my family would go up to uh, Windham Mountain or Hunter Mountain, mm -hmm. which is like uh, Jersey. Two, no, that's like two hours Pennsylvania? upstate. Two hours upstate. Uh, upstate. Okay. After yeah. you get out of Long Island, the two hours <laughs> from where you live. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So once we got over the Throgs Neck, it would be about two hours. Oof. Um, yeah, my parents and I all uh, taught skiing or snowboarding, and that's how we afforded to, like, go every weekend. So uh, pretty much from, like, eighth grade through... I was like 20 I spent every weekend at Windham Mountain teaching uh, kids with disabilities to ski or snowboard oh that's awesome that's actually cool. and then I did a uh, an internship at Breckenridge at the same time that E-Money was living in uh, Silver I think he was living in Silverthorne which is like the next town over um, in Colorado and, right yeah in Colorado yeah, yeah so uh, the whole time that we were there uh we were trying to link up, it just never really happened. But mm -hmm. yeah, we lived in the same place at the same time. So that's where I found out that E Money was like super into skiing. Like I hadn't yeah. done that prior to then. Yeah, it's a trip. Um that's crazy. Um so so after Hunter you moved to Denver. So not Denver. I'm sorry, Colorado. Like that's a very ignorant New York thing where <laughs> you got the, the got the state wrong. I thought this okay. So you moved to Colorado for a while? 
I only lived there for about six months when I was doing an internship. I, uh, I was teaching, did the internship, and right at the end of the internship, I blew out my knee. So I had to go back home and get that all fixed and have my mom take me to doctor's appointments and shit because I definitely was not going to be able to do all that bureaucratic stuff on my own. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, so I blew out my knee and then, like, finished school because I, like, took a break uh, from Hunter. I went back and went to, like, community college. And then right after I finished community college, I moved to California. So that was when I was, like, 23, I think I moved here. Yeah, I feel like there is a lot of info here that people might not have known about you, like... Because I feel like a lot of people probably don't know you're from New York originally, because I would say in the most recent years where you're like skating has blown up more and you've made more of a name for yourself in skating, it was while you were living in California. And like, what do you think the reason for that is? Did you just surround yourself with the right people? This was like the weather that made you skate more? Like, what do you think that was? I, I think it had a lot to do with a lot of things. So when I was in New York, I actually... Uh, I skated a lot with the Coburn brothers and we made videos and they did pretty well, but they were pretty regional. So, uh, but I started skating shadows and then Mike Obadoza actually hooked me up with some shadows at that point. Shout out to Mike Obadoza. But then because of Mike, uh, when I moved to California, I immediately got hooked up with, uh, Jordan Williams and Jalward Santos and uh, through Mal I got hooked up with Jeremy Soderberg and I don't know California's it's easy to skate all the fucking time like the weather's amazing and like spots are endless so probably has a lot to do with that and then being around good people helps uh, be motivated so yeah, I don't, I don't really know why there was that change, but I, I have to assume that it's because of the people I'm around and the weather. Yeah, California, you know, makes it easy to get stuck when you're trying to do skating stuff, and especially if you're on a visit um, and with good friends and good people out there. It's like, yeah, I love California. Um, I want to get into more into that, but I actually – I, I kind of want to dig more into like you teaching disabled kids skiing on the mountain before we get into California, because I find oh. that to be interesting. Um, I actually, a long time ago, I used to work with uh, autistic children, like with Franco Camayo at a place called Thursday H Child. And I find that work very rewarding, you know, something like you can, you know, it could be frustrating, it could be tough, but like at the end of the day, you feel good about it. Um, how did you get into that? And, and what was that experience like? So my mom is a physical therapist, so she's pretty well-versed in that community. Uh, so when we decided that we wanted to ski and snowboard all the time, it just seemed like the most logical thing for us to volunteer and get passes from it. And I guess we, we didn't realize how much the whole family was going to like appreciate that experience. Um, so yeah, I think I was in like ninth or 10th grade when I started, uh, volunteering and yeah, it was everybody from people on the spectrum to people with amputees. I did some work with, uh, like disabled veterans, uh, with the, with the Wounded Warrior Project and also... Uh, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Say, uh, fuck, what is the... I don't even know. Uh, yeah, a bunch of different uh, things. And then, uh, yeah, I kind of got hooked because I really enjoy teaching in general. And teaching to that population is, like you said, it can be frustrating and slow. But like when you make the big leaps it's so fucking rewarding. So yeah. it also helps you as in your craft because you really have to break down what is happening. 
uh, for your for yourself and for them and relay it in like tangible ways. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it, it made me a stronger snowboarder and it also helped me break down things in skating a little bit easier for myself and then make it easier for me to actually like teach myself to do it the other way. Like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of benefits from it personally and for the greater good. Yeah, no, that that's cool. That's an interesting point because I've actually found that when I try to like teach people something particularly in skating or when like we're even doing these inside outs on, on the podcast, because a lot of the skating that you often do is like, you're, you're doing it, but you're not like telling yourself the breakdown process of it. And it's then like when a you're nature. Teaching, yeah. When you, then when you're teaching someone, like you're actually becoming conscious of like those little steps in between and that you might not even notice while you're doing it. And you're like, Oh yeah, I do this and I do this and I do that. And, oh, this helps. And uh, it makes you better at the, at the skating in general or the snowboarding or whatever, um, whatever it is that you're doing. But, um, and yeah, I could, I could totally see that that being a, a rewarding thing, like having a direct effect on people and like teaching them the joy of whether it be skating or snowboarding or, you know, Austin, I know you've showed a few people how to play the drums. I've showed, I've showed a mm. few people how to, how to play the drums too. And it's just rewarding when you see them like find the joy and like yeah. enjoy it, stuff like that. That click moment but, is so sick to see. Like, yeah. It's like you're peeing around, you're like doing whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, you got that rhythm or you yeah, like, yeah. link s turns or like yes. someone does a soul grind for the first time like that yeah. shit is so rewarding mm -hmm. and in that process you grow a lot so it's mm -hmm. definitely a beautiful thing totally like you like it's like you see the struggle before and then like it all like starts to click and make sense and you're like there it is and like knowing that you have like a direct hand in that um especially with people who have like you know are, are handicapped in in whatever way and uh with and that's really cool with the disabled vets too like i have a friend uh antoinette she works like a staten island girl we grew up skating with she works with the wounded warrior project and uh, she's an iraqi vet and yeah that stuff is is just really i just always when i see that i'm always very moved and that's really cool man because like a lot of those people to rediscover those joys is really good things for them mm -hmm. fuck yeah especially like people on the spectrum uh when they gain a skill it opens up doors in like so many areas like kids that are like nonverbal will go and start having full on conversations with you after they learn this skill because they have that confidence like and instilling confidence in people is like such an like a powerful thing absolutely absolutely man i love this this is i didn't expect us to get the, the heartfelt point in this podcast but here we are this is nice damn joey you, nice, you you're Joe. you're meant to teach an inside out on how to do toe rolls you got to yeah, yeah let's and, do it and that everyone could do their toe rolls post it tag tag you in it so you get you know some rewarding feelings about showing all these people how to do toe rolls and everyone succeeding at it and now people like billy have toe rolls and could do zero toe rolls to royale and rails like alex brosco that's gonna take that's gonna take a while that's gonna take a long <laughs> long time alex is i know but, you're pretty um, good yeah where you choose to like which shoulder versus which foot is like i i still don't have the cheat code for it do you look over your shoulder when you do that i feel like i just look down when i do that how are you gonna spot the royale oh i didn't even know we were going to rails i thought we were just doing zero toe rolls <laughs> no, just no i i look over my left shoulder when i do with my right foot like, I use my natural fakie and then go up on my right foot. Oh, I definitely don't even turn around. That's weird. Everyone's got their own way of doing shit like that. Yeah. But that's another one. There's there's levels to it, you know? There's levels mm -hmm. to it. There's definitely cheat codes to everything, too. That's why you got to show the people the ways, Joey. Let's go. Let's set it up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> He's ready to go. Um, all right, cool. So... Let's actually get into um, some other things that you've uh, you, you came out to California. You've uh, been skating with the the, the the two easy guys, the the Long Beach guys, and a lot of the uh, you guys and up to no good, the whole crew. So you got affiliated with them through what you came out here on a trip, like you came out here on vacation, or like how did you how did you like fully meet and get into meeting everybody? 
I came out here one time. Uh, my dad was involved with the LA Forum. So he moved out here a couple of years prior to me. Uh, came out here once a little bit with uh, mostly Mike Obadoza. And uh, then I finished college and really didn't know where I was going. My dad basically was like, you're going to come out here and you're going to become a stagehand. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Um, <laughs> but then, so when I moved out here immediately, I got hooked up with Jordan and Jow Lord and Germ and through those guys, I met pretty much everybody like through Germ, I met Chris Calkins and, uh, like Lonnie, which ended up being a section in feet four. Uh, and then with Jordan and Lorb, I ended up eating like, yeah, pretty much everybody. Yeah. I just, it, it seemed like pretty natural when I look back at it. You surround yourself yeah. with an awesome group of people too. That's like, I feel like when you go to at least like Long Beach, like, you know, you're in a good place right there. Everybody's so productive, so motivated, all these guys, and you fit right in with them, it looks like, anyway. Yeah, for the most part. I'm, <laughs> He's I'm, like, a, little yeah. bit, I'm a little bit different than those guys. Sometimes. You're from the East Coast. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'm also kind of a dirty hippie sometimes, so, <laughs> like, they always make fun of me for, like, my wrinkly clothes and, like... Wrinkly clothes. Like yeah, but, like, you know... I got You're sneakers. You. I got sneakers. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I don't just wear flip flops. You're a high piece on the low? <laughs> on the low low. On the this low. is an expensive I mean, ass shirt. I was about to say, look yeah, at that shirt. Expensive. That shirt is dope. Yeah, so shout out to fucking Bruf. Uh he brought this for me when I was uh when he came out for Blade Cup. Some dude actually got fucking stabbed in it. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See is that those? Holes? Yeah, those holes. See that like giant stain on the arm? That's not tie dye. No, the brown <laughs> is fucking blood. What the fuck? Yeah, he's seen some dude on the side of the road that uh, was wearing this shirt, and he's like, "I'm just gonna stop." Uh, Scott owns a vintage store in Kentucky, uh, Vintage Therapy, Lexington. Go follow them if you don't already. Um, but yeah, he saw the shirt. He was like, holy crap, is that real? Uh, checked it out. It's single stitched and got the right tag and all that stuff. And the guy's like, yeah, I'll sell it to you. Like, what do you think? And I don't know. That he ended up getting it for like 20 bucks. But he's like, before I sell it to you, I have to let you know. <laughs> I got stabbed in it last week. And he... Pulls off his jacket and he just shows him the giant blood stain. Yeah, so. And you were like, I'll take it. <laughs> Wrap well, it up. No, he brought it out for me. He's like, I don't think anybody else would appreciate this story as much as you would. And I was like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> like, some dude got stabbed in this shirt so that I could have it. Oh my god, that's that, sick. That dude. reminds me of like the class. <laughs> that reminds me of the cliche like horror, horror story movie, whatever, where you like, a family just got like massacred, like murdered in this house, and like this other family comes and like, oh, this is nice, a good deal, you know, I could live here, and it's like all haunted and shit. But like, hopefully, it's just not haunted. But you were like, yeah, someone got stabbed in it. I'll fucking take it. <laughs> it might be haunted. I don't, I don't know yet. A haunted shirt. Yeah, That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. Ken, That's a cool movie. <laughs> that is a cool haunted movie. Haunted shirt. Haunted shirt. Start doing crazy stuff, dude. Anytime you put, it's like the mask, but the shirt. <laughs> Every time you put on the shirt, like you have like this like deadly, you just like have a rage. You just like get like you get taken back to the scene of the incident where like you were getting stabbed and it just brings you in that mindset and you're just ready to go. So that's an idea. If anyone wants to go ahead and write that idea and hook me up with some royalties, that's fine. Hook us up because we just came up with it right now. So yeah, right? if anybody okay. wants to pay for it in the super chat, go ahead. <laughs> we got that's some right. fun. We split half for our super chat. With our guest, and we have a lovely guest on today. Please, if you're watching, hit the like button and shout out to Blank, our sponsor. 
How to throw that in there, Joe. You know. Yeah. I'm on a podcast. Too. Hey, if you don't follow the Wax Toaster, go do that. Go like, subscribe, all that stuff. We need to get You got to follow the Wax Toaster. We, we got to talk it. some Wax Toaster, by the way. We're doing it right now. We're, we're doing the Wax Toaster the, the way we do this it. This is it. The second this half is, is going to be on Wax Toaster. We're going to take it off Jump Street, put it on Wax Toaster. Split yeah, it up. Perfect. I like we that. Were, we, were, we were saying we should go on their podcast. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. You guys on. Let's go. That'd yeah, be sick. Let's I go. Let's go. Right. After this? Yeah, like right after this. We'll Let's go. Let's do it. I won't sleep tonight. Up for it. Yeah. I won't sleep tonight. Let's go. Don't sleep. Be unique. <laughs> be unique, baby. 11.31. Uh. You already know. You already know. Yo, so, okay, so you do the Wax Toaster podcast with uh, Taylor. So you've known Taylor and Jimmy for quite some time since the East Coast, right? How'd you meet yes. those guys? So I met Jimmy at Woodward when we – Jimmy was probably like 15, so that makes me like 17. And I didn't see him for a couple of years, but I went to the last, last man standing when I first met – when I first moved to Astoria. And then I met this kid who skated shadows, really tight clothes, like wild. He's just wild. I don't know. We instantly got along. And then I come to realize that it's Jimmy's brother, Taylor. And then we sessioned one time at uh, Pier 25. And from there, those are my brothers unconditional love for the two of them like i've spent a lot of time at their house in new jersey and they've spent time at my parents house they yeah those are my best friends i talk to them weekly taylor a lot uh that's actually how the wax toaster came to be like during the pandemic we were facetiming for like a couple hours every week and it came to the point where, like, we're just bullshitting about skating regardless. Like, why don't we just have someone jump in here and do it with us? Yeah, but I, yeah, those are the the best people. If you don't know them, Jimmy's a fucking monster on the skates. Dude. He's the craziest. Always doing Did you hammering. see him skate at the Blade Cup? Did I see him skate? Seen at the Blake everybody Cup. skate. <laughs> Dude, you, you were there and watched the whole thing? I seen ev- I was judging, so I Oh, oh you judged. Person, That's right, I'm trick. sorry. I seen I, every trick. I hope you saw every trick. Okay. Yeah, I seen every the, 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 the way you said that it actually sounded kind of painful. You were just like I seen every trick. <laughs> it, it was a lot. How how was it? How was yeah, that whole experience? Because like long days, two long days. Yeah, it, it's a lot of work. It was a long, long experience. Uh, just uh, the way that it was like broken down made it pretty difficult. Like the open was 120 people, and yeah, prior to the open, we did the veterans and the under 18, which was another 50 people about with finals and. By the end of the first day, my eyes, I had also came off a late shift the night before. So I didn't get home until like two or three and then went right into that. And my eyes Damn. just wanted to fall out of my head. But it wasn't like it was an amazing experience. And I'm like so grateful for that opportunity because I've always wanted to judge and see how it felt. It was just very long. A lot of people. Uh, everybody killed it, but it was, it hurt my eyes. Dude, dude, it that is me. the hardest. Uh, John Ortiz, good friend of mine. He was a judge too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I just, he does it a lot. And I just tell him like, man, that is like the hardest job. It is. Um, I've done some judging before and I, I hate doing it. It's just like, um, you're, you're just, you, you just have to be on the whole time work the whole day Mm -hmm. nobody thanks you and then at the end of the day if like some people think you're wrong which happens like a lot 
that just always like coming up to you and being like, yo, it should have been like this. Like, at least in my experience, hopefully you didn't have that experience, but um, often like being a judge is just such a tough job because like you gotta, like I said, you gotta be on point all day. And then if like uh, the crowd or some people in the crowd or just even a few people don't agree with you, you might get a little, a little pushback. So it's a tough job. Got to give it up for the judges. We were lucky in the fact that like, it was pretty unanimous in each of the, like, whatever division it was, like the top eight was, you knew, like. Yeah. You're talking about the open? The the top eight? I mean, the open, Everything. veterans, the juniors, like, getting people to the finals was pretty unanimous. Like, it was easy to judge that. But then when it came down to like one, two, and three, like there was some give and take. Uh, yeah, like I that's always going to be like, tough. Like mm-hmm. it's always tough, and but having five judges definitely makes it easier. Yes, just because like if four people think one thing, well, you're shit out of luck. Right. Like yeah, like four right. people clearly saw something that you didn't see. Right. So, yeah, it, that yeah. was I, I th- a good part of the whole experience. Was yeah. Also, the people that I was judging with, like that was an honor. Like, Who was it, Alex? Yeah, uh, Alex Miranda, Don John Ortiz, Miranda, uh, Joey Ayara, John Ortiz, Don Everett. Yeah, that's him. And then me. Did you judge the high jump contest? <laughs> no. There's no, there's no judge for that. I guess it's just like whoever no, makes it. That is that is <laughs> self-contained. <laughs> okay, I just, I just, I just didn't know if you, if you had to go all the way over there too, on the other side of the course, you know. That. Yeah, I was actually the the stick that they were jumping over. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was insane. The high jump contest too. Uh, Mike Mike Lashore, who, who did the who won it? Did, it like oh, I saw, shout saw out Mike Lashore. Yeah, hell yeah, that was so fun. I didn't even I I missed the high jump completely. I, I wanted to watch it, but I didn't know what happened. It was like just on the side, I guess. But I saw him later. I was like, yo, you probably could have won the high jump. And he was like, I did. And I was like, what? <laughs> Sam was like, Jeter was supposed to win. Our buddy. What do you mean supposed to? Hurdler. And uh, he didn't come through. Damn. He's a hurdler? Yeah, he's a he's like a collegiate hurdler and like he coaches it for high school. That's a different oh, technique wow. though, hurdling as opposed to mm. so it's it's yeah. it's a technique yeah. game. Yeah. It's yeah. like saying like a, a a speed skater could do what we do or something like that. It, it's still jumping, but it's not the same jumping. That's cool. Though. Yeah. I like that they have a high jump though. But what what was your highlight of the weekend, Joey? Of the Blading Cup weekend? The movie night. Really? Yeah. The movies are fucking sick. It was so yeah. sick. That there was so many. Hit it back- wet. Yeah, hit it wet went off. Hit it fucking wet, baby. Not <laughs> hit it dry. wet, baby. <laughs> so sick again uh yeah that one uh i had some clips in the blader gang video i had some clips and hit it wet uh so that was cool to finally see those um those were all filmed like like early pandemic so i hadn't seen any of that um and then i was super excited to see uh Cameron bunker section with uh, Yvonne. Oh, that was yeah, so good. That was awesome. Yeah, it was so sick. Like, uh, I've skated those bunkers and they're not easy. And I've seen Cameron skate them and he makes them his bitch. So, <laughs> yeah, I was excited to see what he pulled out and everything did not disappoint. Uh, the Them NYC video was great. Of course, Zephyr was great. Mm. Uh, yep. Yeah. I also, a, I also love the thing with uh, Vince Camarillo. Yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. that was dope. That's a unique my, story my, my, too. My, I think I think the good thing about that one is it has a lot of like outside of uh, our community value. Like yes. uh, like my fiance saw that and she like she was in the theater and she was like really like captivated by that one and that was a, a really cool story. I like that one. It's right in the field. Did he know? did he put any right of that there. online? By the way, do you know if if any of that stuff is up? To the public, because people who are listening or who weren't there probably have no idea what we're, what we're talking about mm-hmm. right now. I didn't yeah. know if we could like link them up, but pretty much Yvonne had a, a bunch of short films. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to call them short films, but they're like more artistic, 
filmed uh, videos, whatever. Um, but yeah, one of this dude, Vince, who was got out of prison after, was it nine years? Am I making that up? Yeah, nine years. Nine years, yeah. And like he had a, his ankle bracelet on for, uh, what do you call the house arrest, I guess? Like, he had, like, house arrest, yeah. Yeah, house arrest. And he just had to get permission to go skate. He got some some 908s and then 908s and was like, yo, let me just go. I want to skate. I've been dying to skate. The skate didn't even fit over the ankle uh, bracelet. <laughs> like that, I was like the struggle in itself, which was like crazy to see. And then he just pulls up to like a, like a 20 stair down rail and like goes in first, first trick back out the gate. Oh, no, he, 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 he skates some like chill spot first, but it was like the first day. Then he goes to like a big rail. Yeah. And yeah, no, either way, it was, it was the way he put it together was really cool. And it was like a little bit of a moving piece and it was, uh, I hope it, like Yvonne puts it out online. I hope it's not a, a classic Yvonne story where it just no one ever sees it again. Um, yeah, you should go ask him whether it's when he's going to put it out. Yeah, that would that would everybody, do really well. Everybody ask, everybody ask when that's going to be put out. He's that's gonna true. Love that. Yes, everyone hit up Yvonne. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> I fucking hate that. <laughs> well, he should put it out. What's I know, up? But- Definitely just want to hear it from everybody. He knows. He yeah, to put it out. He'll, put, he'll put it out. He'll put it out. He'll yeah. put it out. Sorry, Mike. There's Sorry, a lot. Man. There's there's a lot of good stuff that's already out. Like the um, the Zephyr thing was put was put up right after it was premiered. I think everything else yeah, is out. The, the, the Them Journal was put yeah. up right after it was premiered as well. The Blader Gang video is up. Um, it's hit it wet out. Yeah. I don't think the Blader Gang video is up yet. Oh no, it's not. No, I don't think so. I is, what do I hit it wet? Yeah, it's hit it wet out. It wet goes up sometime this week. Yeah. It should go up sometime this week. That's Sick. definitely a banger. Yeah, Yvonne did a, a bunch of going. He did the, the Cameron one at the bunkers. He did uh, the Joe Atkinson one, which had a yeah. ridiculous end there, which I hope people see that because that was insane. And he did that, that Vince piece. Yeah, but Hit It Wet, is, it was like a highlight, definitely. And whenever that comes out, everyone definitely has to check that out. If you've seen the first one, you know the second one delivers just as well, if not better than the first one. So you definitely got to check that out when it drops. Yeah, you had yeah. a part in the first Hit It Wet. How, how did that come to be the whole, uh, uh, how did that come to be the idea of the first Hit It Wet? Uh, so the first Hit It Wet, Taylor moved to San Francisco to go to college. Uh, he went to some film school up there, and I had recently moved down here, uh, and it was really more or less like his thesis for school. I think I think that's how we kind of used it. Like, uh, of course, as a skater, he's just gonna film skating. Uh, he met Danny, who is people's champ right now uh cameron and uh john and they skated a bunch i went up there filmed a couple of times uh and yeah i think a lot of it was like him using his footage to do schoolwork, and it all like kind of morphed into a video i could be lying off my ass right now. <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to talk to Taylor about it, but like, that's my the gist of what I got at, like what I thought it was. And yeah, I, I was lucky enough to have a part in the first one. I was lucky enough to have a couple of clips in the second one. Uh, filming with Taylor is just super natural. Like, like I said, like my unconditional love for that guy is, yeah, he's my brother. Taylor's the man straight up and uh, we neglected to mention this before too when we were talking about Hit It Wet at the Blading Cup this past weekend but they also teamed up with Eric Garcia made a sick ass book photo book oh, yeah. which I copped a, a, a book it was it's so legit this book and I don't know if he has any left I think he was sold out at the Blading Cup I don't know if he has more that he's doing online but I, I don't think know he does he, he sent me one after Blading Cup because I didn't actually get to grab one from him but they should have more so hit up usg if you want a bunch of pictures it's it's more than a bunch it's like how many pages it's like 143 pages i think and yeah, super good right, quality right, right. yeah it's it's so good and so legit so not only did they have a a, a dope ass video but they got a, a sick book to go along with it too and i have it on my coffee table right now so shout out esg billy you're on mute 
Yeah, that picture on the Golden Gate Bridge was so epic. Yeah, that cover shot. The yeah, sketch. there's just a Ridiculous. lot of shit that happened in again that like couldn't happen at any other time but a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Like that... some of the hill bombs, like that Golden Gate shot is not fucking real. Yeah, but... no, it's not real. <laughs> and, and yeah, it... like it's insane. That we... would never go down. We we spoke Unless, about this. Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, unless there's no cars going to work or coming in and out of the city, you know. But never. Like, yeah, never. Never. That's like at eight in the morning. Like that's prime time. Damn, we, we fucked up as a community because now that we're talking about this, we've spoken about skating during the pandemic a bunch of times. But if somebody like, if a bunch of people got together and did like a book of like you just said, stuff that you can't normally skate or scenes parts of the city where you would never really be able to have the opportunity to skate or do a particular trick or sketch, whatever, and put that into a sick book. That would have been awesome too, like a straight up pandemic skating book because New York was the same exact way as that. I'm sure a ton of other cities were as well. Damn, that would have been a, a sick concept. We need another pandemic. Next pandemic yeah, I was about we'll to do say, that. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Should we start the next pandemic inside job from, from the skate community so we could produce a book? No. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even feel good about joking about that. <laughs> but, um, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you know what's crazy? Like, Danny Mom, um, Taylor, like, all those guys in SF, like, I feel like SF is, like, a different skating thing. It's, like, not the same as the skating that we all do. It's its own thing. Hmm. It's so fucking hard to skate up there, man. Like, yeah. Like, even the most technically able skaters have a difficult time up there like it really takes a certain mentality like parker richardson absolutely destroys sf it's yeah. like something like he does it different like he skates it you you have to be ready to go down a hill like you hmm. you have to be ready and if you're not ready for like something to be fucked up in or out of the trick that you're trying, you're not going to try the trick. So yeah. like the first couple of times I went up there, I did okay. I got a little bit used to it. I've actually ran into the back of a van, like going full speed. Like, it's a it's, really hard place to skate. It's probably the hardest place, place to skate in the country, I think. I would argue that's probably the hardest skate, place to skate in the world. Yeah, it's like, really hard. Like, of course, like skating on like dirt is like not that easy. But as far as places with <laughs> concrete, that's mm. the real yeah. fucking. That's the Everest, man. It's yeah. it's so scary. Like, especially when it's not a pandemic and there's cars flying by and things are very unpredictable. Like, it's a difficult place to skate, and like timing is hard like i don't know it's it's really hard it definitely i have a really difficult time up there and i enjoy it so like a lot of people yeah no i like it's gonna be like an easy time they're gonna get a bunch of clips it's like you come out of the weekend with like four or five and you're like i fucking killed it (laughs) yeah yeah and you're like always at risk for like, well, you just you just run through wheels in that place. You like always at risk for some nice road rash, like uh, not even from falling, just maybe trying to like slow down and after doing a trick or something if it doesn't work out. But um, you have yeah, to like, have I, a good UFO I, test slide. If you yeah, you, UFO, you, yeah, fun. yeah. Otherwise, you're completely screwed. No, totally. Yeah. And um, well, I lived in Oakland for a while, so. So we skated SF for a bit. That's that's like the it's like the hardest uh, and most stressful. I think. Play. Sometimes I even see like clips from SF, and I'm just like, man, just even watching the clips, it looks it looks stressful because it's like, a, yeah. you know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. That's that's how I feel watching all that footage too. Every time there's a hill bomb or something like that, I get like Ajita watching that. Not even for like the road rash and shit, but like just cars in general. I know people have like lookouts down the road and shit, but I'm like, you're like five blocks down. How do you know like no one's coming? Like it's it's it blows my mind when I see that shit. Shout out to Taylor for fucking taking the hill bombs with some of these dudes with the fish eye too. Yeah, that's like, that is definitely overlooked. Like. Yeah, I heard Taylor's pretty. Uh, I heard he's pretty wild, like wild out there. I had a buddy out there, um, just went up there with like uh, Jake Cottrell went up there with Parker. 
Oh, and yeah. he was say, he was just saying like Taylor was just like bombing hills like at night like with the fish eye just flying. So he's probably just getting like used to it right now. He's already been like in like oh, the like in, in like the region of like Hesher like wild man kind of skater as is him and, and his brother like to some extent. But I just getting yeah. used to the SF like hill bombs is like a completely different. Uh, it's a different it's a, realm of skating. Like getting it really is. Bombs, it really man. is. I don't, like you can hit the biggest king trail you want, but like bombing those SF hills is the scariest thing you can do. No, it really is. That's a good point you made about Taylor too, because in the Hit It Wet book, it's obviously a lot of like behind the scenes photos and shit like that, and you see Taylor bombing hills with the the, the fish eye with everybody, yeah, and it looks like two thousand dollar camera. He's yeah, the photo, the, the photos look awesome with that too. It's like the skater, he's right behind him, close as hell with the fish eye, hair flying in the wind, going probably like forty miles an hour. They're they're awesome photos. Yeah, yeah, she captures the behind the scenes really well. It's yeah. Shout out ESG. What a yeah, he's like uh, the fact that he's like still around, like just Godfather status in the Bay, and just like most humble guy ever. Like huge shout out ESG. Like his photos are epic, and mm. I was talking to him recently about uh, just at the Blade Cup. But um, still, photography and blading is so sick. We can't forget about just like photos, man. Photos are so make blading look so sick. Mm. Clips obviously are always going to need, and clips are dope, but just. I love the photo. Photos are dope. So shout out ESG to, for preserving that like style of, uh, yeah, just uh, content and photography like in that such a aesthetically good looking city. Is that the right word? Yeah. And good so, skaters too. It all comes together. Like they got the whole yeah. the whole recipe mixed up perfect. And along the lines of the photos, I miss seeing sequence photos which you definitely don't see anymore when was the last time you saw a sequence photo remember like you opened up a b-mag or oh, wow. um one or a daily bread and you saw like bah, 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 bah. like that is that's, that, that's a relic of the past right there what's up with that how come we don't have those anymore I, w- I would love to see some sequence photos posted i'm just saying that's that's something I'm, you're a photographer bro yeah dude get let's go it. let's go do it yeah, i want I, <laughs> I wanted to do some sequences the day you guys skated in, in staten island for the the mesmer edit but i had to film more so i couldn't like do that and that was like what i wanted to focus on for that mm. day and i was like oh we ha- filming was more important though obviously for the edit but i do want to see more of that i think <laughs> i think people miss that like well might not know they miss it until they see it again and be like damn i haven't seen this in a while it looks dope it's a sick way to capture a trick that you're not used to seeing anymore totally i like sequences any photographers out there let's see some sequences come on let's bring it back let's do it let's do a magazine sequences only we'll call it sequence mag <laughs> and even the cover will have a sequence on it nothing no single shots everything is a sequence every page is 12 shots or more just go through it it's like the cover is you know? a sequence with the skater wearing a shirt with sequins on it no, with oh, penguins. You're pretty punny, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, have you guys uh, seen the the first skip boot zine? No. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Rory, um, Rory shout Rory out Rory Mellahan. Mellahan. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a, a flip book in Ooh. the bottom corner of Neil just rolling. Uh, I think it's like a banister or something. But if you just like play with the bottom corner you'll see him rolling across it. It's actually the cover photo. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah so there's your sequence. Do they do that for every issue or just the one? That'd be sick. If they did a different one for each issue. I think it's just the first one. I love that idea though. That they got to keep that going. Yeah. It's really cool. I don't know if he's making another one or not. If he but, does should have yeah, that. Cool. That's cool. Those are sick really raw very similar to like the haitian feel mm-hmm. which Sick. yeah yeah just magazines in general should come back like with write-ups and i love magazines stuff. yeah i'm a sucker for all that stuff i buy it all yeah me too i'm the same way yeah. also okay photographers out there make a coffee table book man like what what esg just did like it's like uh we don't have I was looking up like skateboarding uh, literature. They got like 13 or 14 different books, all these books. like, um, And uh, we don't have many books. I know Be Free has a book out there, the children's book. But yeah, coffee table book, you know, 
I want a nice skate book for the for the coffee table, you know, and the and by the John as well. That'd be that'd be <laughs> nice. So, so I'm just trying to encourage that. But yeah, they they a lot of people will do it for like projects. You know, like it'll come out with like whatever the Cayenne people are doing. They they made one yeah. for I think to give them, mm-hmm. and then uh, like hit it wet again comes out they put out a yeah. piece with it uh aos had one which yeah. is a beautiful beautiful book mm-hmm. uh yeah that's all oh, sh- yeah. i'm pretty sure that was all shot by christian delfino and then put together by mike mcmullen mm. uh that one came out great uh delfino what a what a boss photographer man Oof. such a good photographer such a good man he's a great, great guy Great guy. He's a great, he's just a great guy. Yeah, you know? He's awesome. Yeah. 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 He was one of those people in that first group of skaters that I met uh, when I moved to New York City. And he's always been very kind. So shout out Christian. He's great. Yeah. Christian, what's your coffee table book? Yeah, let's go. Some sequences, please. Oh, I would love to see <laughs> that. I mean, I'll, I'm pretty sure I'll pay a lot 80 of that flat for it. Uh, no. That Dem Journal. <laughs> was uh shot that's by him yeah that's true yeah i think so also yeah, yeah. I do believe which so. is another one like it's mm-hmm. i think that's i don't know if i'm saying too much but i think that's going to become kind of like a a reoccurring deal Sick. with them yeah, yeah. He's, he's been shooting i think a lot of the uh billboards too and they look so good the billboards um like parker's thing um you know john's thing obviously Gregory had one, greg's right? greg's was so i loved pats as like as like a new york guy Who's like done that? Like on the train, she. Mm-hmm. I was just like, dang, that's so. Yeah, sick. that is sick. I don't think Christian shot that one. Maybe he did, but that was that was really cool too. Um, so yeah, let's talk about a little bit more about Wax Toaster. Um, started during COVID, like you said. Do you have any uh, favorite podcast, uh, favorite episodes that you did, or any like interesting moments throughout the podcast that you thought were like, hmm, this is. This is something I didn't think I would encounter, or this is interesting. I mean, you never know what you're going to encounter with Parker Richardson. But he did, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we did uh, the. We filmed his. We don't do him live, uh, just because that's like more work. But uh, <laughs> we'd like to eventually do him live, but. Uh, we filmed his like the day of or the day after the like the storm of the White House. Mm-hmm. So he, his background, he was at the Oval. Oh, I remember that one. I had to think what it was. Like I was like I was thinking of an actual <laughs> storm. I was like, was there a storm on the? But then okay, I get it. Okay, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, that was so funny. He's, he's like pretending like he stormed the, the White House and he's in the oh White House. Oh my God. That was awesome. I, I saw yeah, that. I didn't realize that that was the same. That was the actual like day or whatever that that happened. Yeah, I didn't like catch a, that. I watched it later on. That's why. Yeah, it was one of those. Uh, <laughs> the episode with Josiah Blee was. Uh, it helped. I was at a point where I was kind of feeling back and forth about like what I'm doing with skating, which is like I think something that everybody goes through around my age after you've been doing it for almost 20 years and you're not making any money off of it. And it's like, what is this actually for? And to hear a story like like Josiah's where he kind of got fucked by REMS and like still loves skating for skating was like, it really helped me personally. Uh, The Martin Danning episode is pretty interesting. I won't get too far into it, but there's some weird shit going on. Over there. Yeah, that was that was an interesting uh, one. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all the episodes have, you know how it is. Like, there's just points of each episode that are either moving or really funny or just, I don't know. When we started it, like, me and Taylor were basically hanging out on FaceTime for hours on end. And we wanted other people to just join in with us. And that's kind of the, what we want it to feel like. Like we're just hanging out. Like we didn't really have any holds bar. Like Parker came in and was in the Oval Office. We (laughs) had Julian, uh, you know, Julian Garcia 
Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He just gets in his car and drives to Lewis's house. Like, mm. Oh, yeah. I remember so, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Lewis is in the episode now. And it's like, all right. That's what's happening today. Like, Sick. that's cool. Like, we're hanging out with our friends. Like, uh, did you guys do any house party while, like, at the beginning of the pandemic? House do you parties? Know what that is? No. Is that an app? Is that an app? Oh, like a Zoom? No. It's, oh, an, no. it's an app where you can basically create, like, a chat room. And then any of your friends can get in as long as the the party isn't closed. And they have, like, games you can play, or... We were just getting drunk. Like, real fucking drunk on there. And it kind of came from that concept of wanting it to feel like you're just in the house party. You know? Yeah, it feels like you're just in a room with you guys, hanging out. Yeah, yeah it's that's, like a FaceTime call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it, yeah, that's what... We're just hanging out. What is it, yeah. does the name mean? Like, where did the name Wax Hoster come from? Hmm, that's a good question. So, you like you don't know. <laughs> not really. Uh, it, there's not like a there's not like a good explanation. I just uh, waxing is like probably the most controversial part of skating. The most controversial part. The most controversial, like between the communities. So, like whether or not you wax something or like. Especially in California. Yeah, especially California. Not in New York. Yeah. Well, in New York, rails get rusted, so you have to wax them. Is that why? Yeah. Totally. I, it's still like new-ish, but sure. most skate parks in New York or Jersey, whatever, like skateboarders ask us for wax all the time, and I didn't understand the concept. But yeah, ledges do get rusty and shit, but... I feel like it's more than that, but either way, we're, I th- we're I think, digressing. I think it's a new here. thing. Skateboarders yeah. using wax. I feel like I think that's it's new too. Yeah, developed in the past, like over like around five years now. Maybe yeah, about five years. I feel like it's the wave. Like it's coming I from feel the like east it coast. Was a cardinal sin. And back in the over. day, I, I hope it carries throughout the rest of the world. But I don't know. Maybe it's starting in the east coast. I don't know if 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 people if other sports wax shit by you. Let us know because I'm curious about this. Definitely not in California though. You are yeah. correct by saying that. Come to New York, skateboarders will ask us for wax all the time. Um, or we'll wax a spot and they'll come up and wax it more. And it's like too fast for us sometimes. And I'm like, holy shit, what are these guys on right now? But it's it's cool to see. Yeah, it is sweet. But it, it definitely is like one of the more controversial things. So I, yeah, I, I see know, that. Just, like, I like the word wax to be in there. And then we were trying to like come up with something Sick. clever. And we got to the point where we're like, this is fucking stupid. Let's just call it like the wax toaster or like the wax whatever. And it the wax toaster just sounded good. Sick. You're saying in yeah, the no, kitchen, I, you were like the wax microwave, wax plate, wax toaster. That's the one. Yeah. yeah no, I actually, I, I actually like that. Like uh, that process in a name because the name doesn't have to be like, particularly relative to uh the thing just like a good combination of words yeah is good like when we were making our thing and 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 not to uh like you know nothing about anyone else's stuff but uh i was just like cool if we could just make ours and not use the word uh roll or like wheel. blade yeah. or skate <laughs> or wheel if we could like just make any any combination of words without roll skate blade or wheel and then we're good so yeah um that's that's kind of was our, I our process. I couldn't agree more. If you're thinking about starting a rollerblading or inline company of any sort, do not use those words in there. <laughs> Don't. Like, They'll figure you know, it out. They'll get to that. Dude, it just looks bad on all of us. Right? <laughs> And the motherfuckers be wearing it around. Do not put rollerblades on shirts. Okay, but on that either. on that topic in the chat right now, Scott Max said wax everything. I feel like that'd be a good wax toaster shirt. It just says wax everything on it. Sure. I Unless... don't particularly love waxing everything. I like. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we can wax everything. We could. I'd rather toast everything. I would rock a shirt that says wax everything. All right, toast it. Toast, toast everything. One. Toast everything. Toasted, dude. I, I like wax, wax everything, period. Toasted. 
period afterwards yeah. that's a good one oh there's gems that in here people all right we're pulling together ideas. This is this is working There's out. There's gems in here, people. It's like, it's like super Seinfeld moment. <laughs> I watched There's the last Seinfeld. Here, what can people. I say? I watched the last Seinfeld. What can I say? Um, I actually want to. Yeah, I, I, forgive me if I'm bouncing around from from topic no, to topic. It's but I actually want to talk about um, like your a bit, a bit of your philosophy on skating, like uh, other than like your influence from from skiing and snowboarding. Um, I think sometimes there's a, uh, there might be in skating at the current date, there's like this kind of, not a big divide, but there's a bit of a divide between like some older guys coming back in and some people who are more with their, like, uh, you know, been skating for a while and there's a new way of skating. And, uh, it's cool to see like, uh, everything that's coming because I feel like skating in the last five years has really tapped into like its most, uh, creative and, dynamic phase with like all the little nuances that uh i think are really important and they look really good and i think you, you really embody that a lot in your skating like the the little yeah. nicks and knacks that are just like um really add value to the tricks but yeah i was curious like um where your inspiration came from from that like your, your thoughts on that and like the the direction of skating at the moment I think the direction of skating is great. I think we're doing what we got to do. It's It seems to be happening in all action sports right now. But as far as like my philosophy on it, uh, I knew at a very early age that I wasn't going to be hard spin top and down rails like all the time. I knew I didn't have that spin to win in me. So it really forced me to one get creative with my trick and spot selection and it also forced me to learn things both ways and uh through that i like kind of came up with this this is more for filming sections but i came up with this concept of getting to zero where like a left-footed trick is like a positive or negative and then right is the opposite and then there's neutral tricks like X grind would be neutral, UFO would be neutral, uh, any sort of uh, like Unity or Unity. Uh, Savannah. Cab driver? Cab driver would be neutral, yep. Uh, so. Uh, hot dog. Hot dog is neutral. <laughs> yep. Hot dog is neutral. Uh, straight air is neutral, zero spin is neutral. Uh, so when you make a section you want your number to be as close to zero as possible and in so you end oh, up oh i love that i love that idea crazy concept right now yeah uh broscow is the fucking best at it like i don't know if he does it on purpose i'd love to ask him but his champagne section is like as close to zero as possible like i've ever seen like there's a like I call them matches. So like there's a match for pretty much everything. So he Damn. shows that he can do both fast slides, both pud slides, uh, all you top sides via Tic Tac, all you top sides for no reason, both heel rolls, both illusions, both everything, both everything. It's amazing. Uh, Damn. That's so sick. Dude. My, my last part's probably like a plus 31. But no, yeah, that, so okay. Here's no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. But like, I, I, I love this concept. Like, um, that's like a really cool way to go about it. It's like checks and balances for your yeah. own skating, you know? Yeah. Did you uh, come up with that or did you come up with it with someone else or how did you come up with that? I came up with the way of kind of quantifying it, but I can't, uh, me and my good friend Steve Kabinsky really uh talked through the idea uh he's the person that i like filmed most of my early sections with uh from like 16 and even recently like we went up to vancouver together like he's one of my oldest best friends longtime brother uh but we came up with that concept kind of together and we always would talk through like uh, how to Trevor Johnson also really helped with 
this concept for me. Really? Wow. Yeah. Trevor, Trevor's from the town just north of where I grew up. So uh, when I started skating with Trevor a lot, uh, he really helped, like, define, like, how to, like, show things. So, like, just for instance, like, even though, like, like if you're going to do a line, you don't really want to do left foot acid and then left right foot acid. But there's a way to show that you're capable of doing both. So, like, if yes. you're going to do left foot acid, like, right foot mistrial is a great compliment. Because, like, you're on the backslide plate of your right foot with the left foot acid and the left foot sole. And then you go to the right foot mistrial and you're on the left backslide plate in the right sole. I love wow. that. No, like, honestly, like, uh, it, it, it's, I, I love that you mentioned that because in like the early days when people were just starting to show that they were able to skate switch, they were doing it very blatantly. Like they were doing like right foot acid, left foot acid, uh, le like, or in the same line, like the same, like the mirror image of the tricks or something like that. And that's, yeah. and that's, and that's still cool. I'm not saying there's anything against that. There's no, there's no, by the way, there's no rules. Like all no. skating is yeah, sick. Like old, all like skating old, is like... sick. Like hammers are sick. Uh, these little nuances are sick. Cess like it's all, it's, I'm, I'm just like pointing out like the, this idea that you're trying to talk about right now that I think is really cool because in the beginning, I think that was like the first initial way you thought you could be able to show that is just like do the exact mirror image of the trick. But now you can do it in like a more like subtle way where you, or like, or like, or like a hidden way, like you're talking about where you accentuate that, like you said, the, the, the left foot acid and the, and the right mistrial, you accentuate like both of like the backslides and that, or the, um, yeah, like I, re I really like that style. That that's cool. Yeah. The, like the ideas, like when you make a, uh, for me, it also is not a good idea to start doing this because like you go down a fucking rabbit hole. Like there was a point in my skating where like I wouldn't do tricks that I wanted to do because it didn't fit what I needed to like be in my section, you know? Right. Uh, so that made like, I don't know, it kind of got to like an OCD point where I've definitely relaxed on it in recent years. And like my numbers are way higher than they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, it's <sighs> fuck. I'm like kind of freezing. I think. Yeah, you're good um, now. I thought we lost yeah, you for now. a second. Um, but yeah, it's, there's like a lot of things that you could do to just compliment other things like i don't know it i don't know where i was going with that i'm sorry ah uh, the free the freezing screen throws your mind yeah no but it's no but it's it, it's true like there's like all those other uh like you said you were getting like ocd about it and it seems like it could be like that when you're um you know the the, the plus one plus two and but that's really cool to like try to make a complete section like fill those those voids like you know from way back in the day there was an element section where uh famously joe navron called randy in his section and said randy too many front farms you have too mm -hmm. many front farms because i think uh, back in the day we weren't necessarily too uh conscious about the we were just trying to get like cool tricks and not thinking about how the section would look complete or the presentation of the section as a whole you're just like trying to do like rad tricks or like whatever like the spot shows up but it's cool to like have that premeditated attitude with skating and just think about like how to fully present yourself as a complete skater and like, and, and all that. That's uh and that seems something that's, that's new about the, the, the new stage of skating now. And like people are just more conscious about everything and it's, it's cool. Like I was actually talking with Bellino recently and we were just like talking about just for me, like the trick is great, but just like people who roll up and land properly, we were just talking about like land gods. We were like, yo, Walt Austin, is a, he just land, he's a land. Like, mm. Show me a clip where he doesn't land proper. And the same for like Will and I think John Blino is yeah. in that boat. And all those things matter. Like the trick, the trick definitely matters too. But it, like it's all the things before and after. And uh, to have 
a, a complete section in that way. Just, I, I just love the the premeditatedness of, of that kind of thing because it becomes artistic at that point. Yeah, kind of artistic. It act like I picture it as like calculated almost. Uh, it's kind of funny to think about it artistically. Like, I guess like when I come up with new concepts and I want to show them, that's where it gets a little bit more on the artistic side. But like that number system is definitely like straight. Like I'm doing like almost like like a matching game, you know? Uh, yeah 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 it sounds like more of a game than like filming a section out of it yeah and that's what it sounds more of it's more strategic than like actually like putting together a section you're just like testing your skills more than like presenting yourself with like yeah this is my skating now you know this is my skating now like this is like i want to show you that i could basically do whatever i want Mm -hmm. that's like the goal is like if I put my mind to a specific trick, regardless of foot, spin, whatever, like I could probably figure it out. Like that's my goal in sh- like the way that I'm showing it. Like the big thing that I like is say like I do like quarter like out porn with my right foot. Like I'm gonna do left foot I'll eat porn. Like to show that like I can do both of those. I don't know how how to really describe it. But yeah, that's that makes perfect sense. It's it's just a more interesting way of that the classic, like we said before, soul lefty then soul righty afterwards, or back to back clips of the same, you know, mirrored mirrored image pretty much of your of your tricks. But that is a good like modern day version of looking at the switch in natural because we we talked about this in the the Hayden Ball episode in in one hundred nine about learning switch tricks and the importance of it and how it affects and changes your skating. And I feel like we're just tagging along on it now with this in a completely different concept. It's awesome. Aiden's fucking amazing at it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times the he's best. Even, yeah, he's so good at it. Like, so good. Like, which way is his natural royale? You don't fucking mm-hmm. know. And the person, like, when you start doing that, it makes it so that your skating is super interesting because when you wind up to do whatever it is, sometimes you can tell what the person is going to do. But if you have such a wide trick selection it makes it so that every trick you're guessing like uh especially with lines you want that next trick at least personally i want to see the next trick and be like oh i didn't think they were gonna do that but it fucking worked perfectly i love that That's- yeah like if you do like top soul like i really don't want to see you do right foot like if you do right foot topsail, I really don't want to see right foot true topsail. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of like if you see that little bit of a jerk with their upper body in one direction, you're like, okay, they're gonna do that. I it's really not that interesting. Yeah, well, I I, I think that's like cool too. Like the um, if it's if it's like predictable, like I, I I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's it's way cooler when it's something you're not expecting. It's like, yeah. oh, where, where did that where did that come from? Mm. Because skating that could be that too. Ever, that's Sk- nice. Yeah, <laughs> skating could be like you know, that like oh like you know it could be all these things. So it it could be a display of so many things. But I like that uh, when something surprises you. That's really cool. Yeah. It, it gets it, you to like like verbalize something. Generally, it's when it's surprising, and that's what I think is important in sections. The element of surprise. A little bit, yeah. Be a little mm. sneaky about it. Like, do something that like they don't expect you to do. Do you yeah. think that's more, uh, uh, do you think it's more like knowing the skater themselves or just in general having that element of surprise? Because I feel like if you know, like I skated with Billy fucking a billion times and like he skated with me a billion times and you know like, when you see someone skating up to an obstacle, you're like, oh, he's going to do a fish brain. Yeah, like you know what they're going to do <laughs> 20 feet from before they jump. And like you just know how they skate and everything. Do you – are you talking about like that kind of element of surprise, or like that surprise, that intersection, or is it just something completely different than that? It's a little bit different than that because like – how do I describe it? I am kind of a nerd, so I know everybody's skating pretty fucking well. 
like I know people switch in naturals and like I want to see people really pushing themselves like going out of their comfort zones rather than like doing what's most difficult or quote unquote the most difficult like I know that for some people doing certain tricks on a curve is more difficult than soling a giant kink rail and for you to be pushing yourself is way more interesting to me yeah no totally me. like um like the way that I was yeah like earlier uh, you... like mm -hmm. the fact that you were doing left foot royales on that little down bar and like left foot sole like got me so stoked up because I know that is not easy for you and it's not something that you yeah. do often and to see that is heartwarming like Dude, that's hell yeah I thank you yeah. Don't, I, I, don't play I, this I man in Swiss skate. Like, and like, I think I, on a, our, not to, not to shout out our own podcast, but on episode 110, Yandel said like the same thing. He was talking about He's like, he out. gets more, he, he gets more stoked seeing more than someone doing like a hard trick, seeing someone like do something that's out of their comfort zone or like uh, push themselves to a point. And it's like, and that's, you know, you, you got to remind yourself because even if like you, especially if you build yourself up to be like a, a skater in this community or a certain like some someone that people know and you don't want to like put yourself in a vulnerable place where you don't look like uh, like where you should be, that's where the fun is. Like the fun is in the place where you're pushing yourself and challenging yourself and like it's co cool to do like your, your classics and all that stuff, but it's cool to like always be a student, you know, that's like a... The, the thing about skating, you could always be that and you could always um, try those things. So it's cool. I, I think that's a huge reason why we lost a lot of people at a point. Because, like, during the mid-2000s, the skating got to such a level where you felt like you had to skate something gnarly. And then that limits the types of maneuvers you're allowed to do on it. Uh, and then when you're limited to what you're doing, it becomes boring. Like you don't realize that's what is actually boring about it. It's the fact that you're limiting like what you're allowed to do. So when you like, I've always been super inspired by like Colin and Sean, like yeah. they've brought the size down and really expanded like what it is to be a rollerblader. Like Colin Every uh, every new edit that they come out with has a different concept. So, like, a couple of Zephyrs ago, he was doing all the heel rolls with the the grinds. And now it's a lot of uh, that, like, swing move and, like, the step downs to bring yeah. back up. Mm -hmm. That's just decomposing things that you already know how to do and really expanding on it. And that's what's most interesting to me. And I think that if you know how to do one trick, like say you know how to Royale with your right foot, you can Soyale. And then from there, you're able to like move in way different directions. So then you can move to Ali Porn. And then now you have like the other Savannah because like your natural is your right foot with the left foot now that's the array which got it you know like mm. it's just using what you know already and expanding on it and i think that's really why skating is at the point that it's at because we took that time to like get away from the bigger stuff and dumb it down and like really yeah. decompose the things and like, there's not like I love doing fucked up things. Like that's it gets your heart racing and it it's fun. Like mm -hmm. when you complete something that's like legitimately scary. Yeah. There's nothing better. Mm -hmm. The high is incredible. Yeah. But to do it solely, like the way that it was happening during the early like the mid two thousands, is not. It's not sustainable. And it yeah. becomes boring. And for the people that are coming back now that think that what's happening in skating is like too small or whatever, 
you just need to exp- like one expand your vocabulary like your eye vocabulary and understand that like why you weren't here those years like whatever your reason is for leaving is it was because you were bored like mm. if you weren't bored you would have kept doing it yeah no that that's that's true and uh yeah i think there was a thing like uh where there was like a thing uh during blading back in the day when there was so much hate on it, where it was like an overcompensation where trying to like do like the gnarliest stuff and just like, didn't even feel like they, there was the space to like play around because like already, no matter what you do, you're kind of being like cut down for like, you know, your fruit boot or you this, that you whack. It's easy. So like everyone at that, at that point, I think was pretty like gung ho on being like, we got to push it mm-hmm. in this way. You know, but we didn't realize the aspect that we were neglecting at that time. And it's just cool to see everyone like reconnect with um, or just find that way that like uh, that there's so many different paths in skating and so many different ways to progress and so many different ways to have fun. You know, like another shout out to the podcast um, when Denny was on, uh, like I learned he was saying like, you know, during my time, like he was he was watching stuff and he wasn't really attracted to it because it was like. Oh, that's, you know, it's like, too, like not Death really defying. attractive. <laughs> well, it's just not attractive. Like, cause it doesn't seem like, uh, maybe in certain ways, just too much. Like, and then he was not saying like, so, like a lot of people m- m- murder skating and all this other stuff. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, like, yeah, Colin is, and Colin's a huge part of that. And Sean's a huge part of that. Like Colin for me is like the way he's skating, like, uh, he can do that for like another 10 years. Like the way he's, yeah. he's going, like but- he's still. He's, he's not like been doing that for yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Like yeah. since mm-hmm. the truth won, like yeah. he's been doing that. Like even before that, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't think he hit a down rail in either of the truths. Actually, mm-hmm. he did that one step up Machio uh, in truth too. But like, he's not hitting down rails. He's just skating creatively and like using his environment to its fullest. And using his knowledge of skating to really, I don't know, make the most of it. He's just creative. It's Colin's probably one of the greatest to do it of all time. And like, regardless yeah. of the fact of like him not doing a quote unquote hammer in fuck fifteen years, like that doesn't take away from his status. No, like and ads like, almost. Mm-hmm. It, it totally definitely adds. adds. Yeah. Totally adds, like, yeah, because he nine hundred in the fucking stair set. He's done mm-hmm. all the crazy shit. The like, first nine hundred, first street nine hundred, street nine hundred. Yeah, street nine hundred. And, and and as he will point out, he grabbed fucking it perfect. and he stayed fakey. Mm-hmm. So fucking perfect. Like, yeah, it was. It couldn't get better than perfect. that. The first one. Yeah. Yeah. So like, to think that he's not able. To continue to like, he could go and topsole and die fucking down rail if he really wanted to, but like, that's not interesting to him. Like, w- w- he's already done that. Mm-hmm. Why would you continue to do what you've already done? It's that's where it gets boring and repetitive for people when like you skate a hand a handicap and you do the same six switch ups on it, or like you skate a down rail and you soul grind and royale it, like. You can only do it that for so long until so, you get bored. It only gets you right. so far. How big are you exactly. really going to go? Like, I have a job where I work with my hands. Like, I like to go big when I can, but, like, when you can skate creatively or push yourself in other avenues, that's when you stay connected to it. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a space for everything, but I want to see people skate for as long as they can too. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking of that, Carlos just came back. He just tops all the huge drops. And you exactly. know what? Like, and and, and I want to support to that, that too. I just want to be clear, but um, no, I, agree with, I, 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 I agree like, with you. I agree with you. I'm saying. Yeah. Where like he knows that he can topsole a down rail like that pretty much in as long as he can walk. Mm. Like. <laughs> That's not pushing. It's pushing his, like, 
his scary, the, the, the fear part of your mind, but that's not really pushing the creative part of your, your existence. Yo, you're hitting it with, you're hitting it with the truth right now, Joe. And this is the true three right here. It, people have been asking, uh, people been asking for it. This is the true yeah. three right here. Yeah. The, <laughs> um, the Long Island movies have been asking for true three. So. Was that the guys who are posting those, the Instagram stories? Yeah. <laughs> tall boys. Tall this is, boys. Yeah. Um, Damn, this is so sick. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep talking for a while with yeah, you if that's yeah. okay. Yeah, um, right. In a little bit, we're gonna open up for questions, but I'm having fun right now talking with you, cool. and I might go grab a beer in a second if that's cool. But I want to ask you. Um, so with all this and everything, where do you see, not like, uh, the status of skating in five to ten years, but where do you see the evolution of skating in five to ten years? I think that's a fun question. Mm. Okay, so like we had our hammer stage, right? And it was kind of like not to say cr like crude, but it was kind of straightforward. Uh, and then when skating kind of. I, I don't want to really say died off, but that seems like the easiest way to put it during like the 2010s. It made it so that the people that were left really stuck around for the growth. Like, so they started practicing the more creative things. You got like people like Nickel Bar who just like really reinvented certain things. Nickel Bar is the most influential skater of the 2010s. I will yep. 1,000%. Like, you can fight me on that one. Like, he changed how He's the, best. the community looked at skating. He was the best before that era. Like, his Bright idea section was fucking incredible. Like, he was, like, 14 years old, half gap top soul and, like, King Grails and stuff. Like, he was so he, – he, he still is, but he was so good. And uh, that type of skating uh, really re redefined what it is, like rollerblading is now. And I think those types of tricks are going to continue to be pushed, but at a bigger scale. So it's going to move – like kids like uh, – I'm going to fuck up his name, but Elia, uh, the kid that did the – Topsoil backflip. Savoisin. Savoisin. That's the type of kid that's going to really push what's happening. Levy, he's a young kid. Uh, he's going to push what's happening. Like, dark to front side. The f like, that's the type yeah, of Yeah, his thing. plastic pushes part was. Yeah, so like, he does a bunch of massive tricks in there. But there's also tricks in there that are kind of groundbreaking. And I think that's where it's going to move. Like the, the size of spots and the level of the skating is just going to keep on growing so that the creative parts are going to be shown in dangerous ways because they've gotten so good at doing the creative things. And that's kind of really where I'm trying to push my skating personally is like I felt like I've been like using I don't know that size of skating for a while. I want to bring what I've been doing on smaller things to something that's a little bit more dangerous. It's kind of like creative hammers in a way yeah. to be able to bring the creativity to like a different level. I guess yeah, that I never thought of it that way, but because when you Bill, when you first asked that question, I was like in my head, I'm thinking like. Because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we had no idea skating was going to be at the level it is now, the way it is now. We would have never predicted, most likely would have never predicted that, most of us anyway. But like, I was like, in my head thinking, will like hammers start coming back again? Like, will we start, people start jumping off like crazy gaps and drop rails and stuff. But what you said, Joey, makes a lot more sense. Just creative hammers taking the creativity on a bigger scale and kind of yeah, like, like a hybrid of the two. Like, when you do a hammer, I think there should be a reason for it. Like... It should like sometimes like like if the spot calls for it, do it. But if you're just gonna like jump off of a, like a basic old roof, it's like ah, you could find yeah. anything. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, it's, no, it, it's a good point. It's like utilizing the spot is like a, is a huge part of it. Like, it's a it, it's like a mix between vision. brain. It's a mix between brain and talent, right? So it's like your vision combined with like the talent and what you can do on the spot, and couple that together. Um, my my, I agree. I think there will be that like combination of like what is creative and like bringing into hammers too. But I also think I, I'm a little prediction myself for what will happen in like a few years in skating. I think um, there's just going to be like it's going to be like Tony Hawk Pro Skaterish, where like a lot of the tricks are going to get connected because there's so many ways to connect the tricks now. You can go from like a hero roll or like a toe roll or like you could do like the Brucey or you could like double toe or double ollie toe to like off tricks two tricks and then like the shuffle sass the shuffle sass to ollie toe like it, you, i just see like way more technical connections happening in the future too so mm -hmm. that'll yeah, be exciting that's to see where i was going with it where like yeah dom bruce is another one that's like really fucking opening up like what it is to do something nuts uh john Vasugi does Vasugi, really yeah. creative things on dangerous stuff and i think that's where it's moving where it's not just going to be about doing the giant topsail which is sick don't get me wrong it's beautiful but yeah like really almost needing an eye for skating to understand how fucked up this thing is. But I have to piss so bad. You're going to go grab a beer, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go piss, and uh, I'll chat with Austin, then I'll go grab a beer. All right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> All right a little so, bathroom yeah. break, everybody. Yeah, a little bathroom break. But no, I completely agree with that. Like, And I really love like the direction that skating is going in this way where – you know, it's just opening up so many doors. And, like, I agree with Joey. I see, like, uh, with that stuff, like, a lot of the stuff he was doing in Fifth Floor. Mm -hmm. Like, the cross double heel. Yeah. Like people are calling the Brucey. Brucey. You know, I think back in, in, in the day, in, like, the kind of, like, more crude era or, like, the more, like, hammer era, as uh, we, we were talking about, which I was, like, a, a part of. Um, that we we might have been like made fun of something like that. We were so like oh yeah, definitely. We we were so like it's got to be this way. It's got to be this way, and, and it's course. really cool that it's, it's coming past that and and, and and that and like everyone's grown and. But um yeah, we, we probably wouldn't even be open to exploring those kind of options at at that during that era. Like I don't think blading was ready at the time. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Like. 10, 15 years ago, we would have never predicted that skating would have been like this. Now, I would have even personally myself not have predicted skating that I would have appreciated skating like how it is today with my mindset of, you know, 15 year old Austin or whatever it was, you know, so it's something that you really can't predict, really. But it's interesting to talk about and speculate about what might happen because the way that skating is progressing, like it's going any direction now, you don't know what the hell is going to happen. You don't know what's gonna happen next year. Like, are, are ramps going to make a comeback? Like, who knows? Like, what's going to be involved in skating now? What's going to be the next trend? You never know. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. I think it's almost getting past the point where, where it is a trend. It's starting to, like, transcend in a place where it's open to almost everything. And it's like, uh, you know, there's a space for everything to be accepted in, in skating right now, which is uh, it's kind of a cool place to be at. Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you think, think, Joe? I, know what you're, I think I know what you guys are talking about, and I <laughs> couldn't agree more. Like, I, there has been a lot of different trends that happened through the last 10 years, and I've been doing my best to keep as many of them in my vocabulary as possible. Like, there was a point where, like, shucking up a wall to the grind was, like, really the in thing, or, like toe rolls or like wheel slides or swivels or certain things. But I think that they're all applicable as we move forward and having them as like, not necessarily a trend, but as basic vocabulary is great. And that's something that's really sick about what's happening with new skaters is there or people that are new to skating and they're seeing what the trend is currently. And a lot of times those things that are happening are basic rollerblading moves, like not necessarily grind, but like being good on skates themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's just making 
the new breed just strong as fuck at the act of rollerblading. Yeah, that that changes the whole aspect of what anybody with skating looks like, and and the growth of the free skating, big wheel, wizard blading, all that is definitely helping with that too, because everybody's exploring those different parts of skating as well, and that just makes your general actual skating itself much better, which in turn makes you better at doing tricks. You know, set slides, grinds, jumping on shit. You're not gonna be able to do any of that without knowing how to skate. And and I think when like 15 years ago. We no one was wreck blading back then. Nobody was quote unquote big wheel blading or anything like that, really. So it was it wasn't anything that we ever did. We just there was a whole generation of kids who put skates on, were like, oh shit, this is sick. Like learned how to royale a curb and then instantly took it to a handrail and just like would get bodied or not make it look good in any way, which was probably one of the downfalls of our sport, uh, if I might say so. But uh, that was definitely a trend in skating too. That was now that we're more mature as a, a sport and a community. We know how to do things differently and approach them correctly. And there's so many people that have a lot of experience like us who could like guide newer skaters in that way to be like, hey, learn this first before learn A, B and C before, you know, this, that, you know. So it's a a different way of learning now, which is definitely helping our sport, I think. Yeah, totally agree. Like there are some people that still can't land fakie, (laughs) that can't hold their fakie. Like, that's insane. You've been skating for how long, and all you know how to do is grind a rail and land backwards and immediately turn forward. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I have a hard time carving ramps both ways, but, like, as far as, like, my my shoulders. But, like, those are the things that should be taught off the rip. Like, you should be taught to carve a bowl both ways, like, before you're even, like, jumping onto a stair set. And I think that will make the next generation of skaters so strong like, exactly yeah no i agree i was like uh skating for like three years before i could even drop in on a mini ramp i'm gonna say we didn't have them i was like, gonna say you know, ramps they, are different they, 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 we, we, they, we didn't have any skate parks back in my day <laughs> but <laughs> but i'm just saying um no it's it, it's true um uh, it's it's good if you could learn to like you know, the switch fakie in general, just like to go over like both shoulders and skate fakie and like be able to like spin fakie this way, spin fakie that way, like to your tricks, into your tricks, out of your tricks. If you can do it on bold, then you're just going to be great. You're going to be perfect because that's like super tough. And there's only a few who I know could like, who are like masters of that. It was like Brandon Smith, mm-hmm. um, Jeff Stockwell. There's a few, but it's a tough one. But it, it's good to, like you said, like match like, be able to like do both or just be a proficient rollerblader. Like I think that's the most important. Like that's what makes people look sick is just being able to skate well, like from point A to point B. If you look clumsy, like on the way up, you're scared for the person, Mm -hmm. like rather than enjoying how beautiful what they are like accomplishing is. Yeah, I think it's pretty common these days for skaters to own um, or at least be doing some sort of recreational blading, which you're practicing how to roll forward, roll fakie without even knowing it. Just either it's commuting, going to work or school or something like that, or, you know, just for fun or exercise. It's it's a whole different thing. And that doing that like one or two days a week helps out your skating enough to learn how to turn, carve on the streets better, go fakie without even like really going out and, quote, practicing how to do it. it. It definitely helps your skating a lot. Yeah, I also think the resurgence of flat has helped that whole spectrum mm-hmm. by bringing in the effective points of contact. Yeah. So, like... Rocker frames, too. I'm sorry? Rocker frames also are helping people. That's, like, a whole new world from, like... There's, like, anti-rocker, flat, and then rocker frames, which are like a whole new level of learning how to maneuver and, and carve your feet around. Yeah, I actually skate a, a pretty weird wheel setup. I uh, I skate what's called a, we call it a kayak rocker. Explain. So, I'm sorry? Explain. Okay. So <laughs> my middle two wheels are like a full profile where they're round and like a normal flat wheel. Not, not flat, but like, a wheel that you would skate 
four down flat. But then my uh, wheels one and four are super pointy. So when you land in the street solid on top of your foot, they all four wheels are rolling. But when you put them on edge, it makes it so that wheels one and four will disconnect or you can pressure on your toe or your heel to make it so that it's one, two, three, four. That's interesting. I never heard of that one before. It's great. It, 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 yeah, it's sick that there's so many different ways of setting up your skates now. Because also, like back in the day, there was you either rode flat, all the same wheels, and there wasn't many options for that. You rode anti rocker, big on the outside, small in the middle, boom, that's it. Yeah. But there's like this guy has kayak rocker. There's like banana rocker. I ride different durometers on the inside and outside. Like there's so many different ways of doing this now. Hold on, let me get you big, Joey. Boom. So basically, my middle wheels are that full style profile mm -hmm. and then the outsides are super pointy that's very interesting so then when it goes on i can't really see but like when you are flat the wheel doesn't really roll but then when you go on edge it releases the front wheel yeah that makes perfect sense yeah so does that help you turn faster i guess so it makes it so that i can have different points of contact. So if I lean really far onto my toes, I can engage just wheels one and two. If I am on the center of my foot and turn, it makes it so that it's just the middle two wheels that are engaged. And then of course, if I'm on my heels, I can pivot really hard on my like heels, like wheels three and four. But how does that affect your skating? Like lay it, like, carving on just the wheels two and three is it just for turning pretty much like carving fast yeah and it also part? releases friction so like if you're gonna like do like a classic like hockey style wheel slide it by putting it on edge you're only on wheels two and three right less friction so you slide better yeah so it's you get that any rocker feel where it's just the two when you're on the side but yeah, it also helps that I, I skate Aeons and the the H block is fucking huge. So, <laughs> that, yeah. But I, I I like the options. Like um actually Mushroom Blading just made a post on Instagram not too long ago about um how he sees rollerblading like golf. And yeah. he talks about how you know there's I, a chipper, a putter, a, a driver, and that's why like particularly like i love seeing people skating flat because it's and i like skating flat too from time to time i want to make myself a flat setup very soon i was skating flat not too long ago recently on some solas and it it's fun but um i think you you know you could be able to do multiple things like for what the spot calls for sometimes the spot might call for flat big wheels like a bowl or something like that or Sometimes anti makes more sense if you're that kind of person. Not everyone is. And sometimes, you know, it's just the big, big wheels that the NBA guys do. Like if it's a certain like cobblestone or something like that, spots that like wouldn't allow you to skate on in any other way. So I don't know. I think that's a, I think that's a cool way to look at it. Instead of like a, this or that, I think it's like a uh, different, different tools different for the job. setups for different, yeah, different tools. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, tool bag. I have yeah. everything from a kayak setup to a 72 millimeter Aeon, a 80 millimeter Aeon. I have uh, like the blow up tire wheels that are useful for certain things. Like I got 110s, I got 90s, I got wizard frames. Like there's different tools for each job. And I couldn't agree more with what uh, Todd said. Like it, I hope, that skating will move in that direction because that's how it is in uh, some of the other action sports, at least snowboarding and skiing. Like you're not going to go out on your park stick when it's a powder day and vice versa. You're not going to ride your fucking your giant surfboard for a day at the park. I mean, you can, and it's super enjoyable, 
like the same way that taking a pair of 110s in a bowl is super enjoyable and you can get a different card out of it, but it's not the right tool for the job necessarily. And exactly. But also playing with the wrong setup in certain situations will make you grow. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of what Todd was talking about is like letting the tools kind of dictate what he's allowed to do on them. And that's interesting. Uh, just the concept in general. Uh, I really wish that the Aeons kind of had a better, like skating Aeons at any rocker sucks. Like the way that the frame is set up, like it's right, not exactly. It not, doesn't make sense. It's not yeah. made for it. And yeah, so I, I don't geez, ride anti rocker. I, yeah, I don't yeah. ride anti rocker. Like, cause I don't know what. Maybe if I got a pair of sways, I would try it out again, or mm. whatever. But I can't ride the carbon boot really because my ankle. It makes my ankle hurt way too much. But yeah, I would like to have that that tool in my golf bag that I yeah. don't. And Aeon almost feels <laughs> anti-rocker because that middle H block is so huge anyway. Uh, yeah, kind of. But like, that's not the part of any rocker that I'm like most like interested in. Where else would you ride anti-rocker? I think you get the best bring, of both. The, the, with the, the wheels farther out. So it makes your points of contact so much – they become outside of your foot rather than when you skate flat, your wheel pressure is underneath your foot. Yeah, I get that. I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I feel like Aeons are like in between specifically because they are so spread apart. It's like – Yeah, one, where your point of contact is underneath One and two and then three and four. Towards the ball of your foot. Yeah. Like yeah. your heel where it's not really like underneath the ridge of your foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think six, six wheels on an aggressive frame would be really sick. What size wheels? I don't know, like 60. So like two. <laughs> we we, like we, we, we got to talk to Leon. <laughs> yeah, one, gotta... like, one like rockered up just a little bit outside of your, like your toe and heel. Wait, which wheels would be rockered on a six wheel setup? One and six. Rockered up? Just one and six? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of like a like a tank right now with like all like the wheels with like the gear around it. Like just so many yeah. wheels. Yeah, like a like it would be like flat and then you'd have like these extra guys and you could like <laughs> either like pop off like stabilizers or... almost <laughs> the front at the one and six are like almost like stabilizers at that point yeah but then you could use them for like all sorts of different things yeah have you ever rode like a, a like a skate more than four wheels like a five or six wheel skate uh i tried a pair of the pr mushroom blading uh, like frames when i was in vancouver they were like one of the first uh prototypes of it mm -hmm. for like maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes and it was really interesting. It's fun right it, very interesting very uh -huh. interesting yeah i wrote uh, yeah i wrote my taurus is also in havasu i forgot if it was five wheels or six wheels at that point i, I kind of lose count but it definitely felt five. five yeah so it was five by 72 and it was super interesting the feel and obviously very difficult from what I'm used to, but it it was really it, it's cool. Like, I I can see people like making fun of that a lot, but when you try it out, you have like a different appreciation for skating, and you skate differently that way. And then you take it to your aggressive setup, and you just look at it in a whole different angle. Going to Wizard School was like one of the best things for my skating. You did that? Like, you actually you went to Vancouver and learned how to like skate the Wizards? I feel like I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, me and Zeke went to it, and he basically like reteaches you how to rollerblade. It's super interesting. Wait, like, you, you went to wizard school? Like Harry yeah. Potter? Uh, yeah. Hogwarts? You know, you know, <laughs> the scar on my eye? Where am I at? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, we went to... Me and my buddy Zeke went to Vancouver just to, like, basically catch up and film a little bit. But in the process, we talked to Leon, and he was kind enough to take a full night and really teach us the way to use the wizard skates. 
So we started by rolling straight. You roll straight. And then you roll straight on one foot. And then you roll straight on another foot. And then you carve with both your feet. And then you stagger it the other way and carve. And then you do it in the other direction. And then you do it backwards. And like, you basically relearn the act of rollerblading in like a, we did it pretty fast in like a two or three hour period. And then it, and then he breaks down like gazelles and lions for you. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So fun. And it's another one of those things where, like I was saying, like with the teaching, you really break down how you do things and then rebuild them. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. That's super freaking cool, man. Damn, that's dope. Like, I want to go to wizard school now. Yeah, yeah. I recommend it for everybody that. Beam, beam, beep, beep, beam, beep, beam, beam. <laughs> Sorry, my it's, boy. I, I was trying to do the Harry Potter. Did that work? Okay, I'm not gonna do that again. No, you you did good. That was dope. Thank you. Yeah. You nailed it in my book. I never seen <laughs> Harry Potter, so you nailed it in my book. Yeah, but honestly, I'm trying to go to wizard school, man. Harry Potter, dude. I don't give a fuck about Harry Potter. I don't know. (laughs) The boy who lived. The boy who lived. You don't know about the boy who lived? Uh, Okay, Joey, Um, me and you, we'll talk about this later. Yeah, we'll we'll get to. We'll do a Patreon video on Harry Potter for everybody out there, (laughs) for all the Harry Potter fans. No, but um, no, that's that's damn, that's so cool. Like, and you know, talking to Torres too, he was saying like the same thing, just like trying that wizard and how it like affects like your your skating and just like the aspect of skating because you like you said during like the like that that era i think like the it was heavy focus on the tricks and not so much on like the skating and like the before and after and everything leading up to it but all those elements need like it's it's great if you could take advantage of all those elements because those are really important elements in skating i I mean it's it's it is skating at the end of the day so Mm -hmm. Cool. Wizard, yeah. wizard school we need a wizard school i need to go to i've been saying that forever too because i've had my wizards for like two years the ones that leon gave billy Dumbledore. billy gave me yeah <laughs> oh my god you guys okay i'll stop i need dude i'm you know, lost i think you, you know what i think i think we should open up for questions soon but but i was also gonna ask joe you got a bunch of sections on youtube would you be down to watch like one or two after this podcast on on our patreon and we could just have a commentary on some of those Let's do it. Let's yeah, do it. I put you on the spot, but do no, that's great. Yeah, we, we have a ton of questions coming in too. I think people a lot of want to ask you yeah. a lot of things. So yeah. let's get into these uh, super chats right now. As always, half of our super chats go to our guest. So if you're hey, inclined to, to do so, tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning, hey. <laughs> straight up, mine smell so fucking bad. If you know me, <laughs> do you ever wash my them? My car is disgusting. Let's try and kill that smell with some new intuition. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm shutting down the podcast right, so real quick. He, Hold on, wait, I'm shutting down the podcast it. real quick, Billy, if you don't mind. I got, a, I got a Jump Street top tip right now. Remember, we're going to do a top tip for that one? I got a Jump mm. Street top tip. So What's I've up? I've had a, a bunch of pair of intuition liners. Every time I wash my clothes, do my laundry, I wash my intuition liners with it as well. So like every week, every other week, something like that, I wash my liners in it, hang dry them, obviously, but... They almost never really get that stinky and it breaks them in really well too because a lot of people have problems with their intuition liners, especially when they're new. They got like pressure points and stuff. They need to be broken in. It's a whole breaking in period. If you wash your liners, personally from my experience, if you wash your liners with your clothes and the laundry, it helps break them in also and it gets rid of the funk. So I just throw it in every time I do my my wash, throw the liners in there, boom, fresh (laughs) liners when they come out. Do you have two sets? All right, there we go. A I top do. Tip. I do, but I just don't go skating do the day I do laundry. Them? I just have different pairs and different skate skate setups that I have. Darwin, oh, with the clothes. Take it dry. Uh, yeah, but I just do it on days where I'm not skating. If like if I'm if I'm no, doing laundry. Like how long is it to dry? Oh, I don't know. Like I, I dry it in my apartment with no window. I don't know, two hours, something like that. Oh no, shit. Okay. Yeah, it's not that bad. And if, if you have like a, a place with like a porch or a balcony or something like that, I don't have any of that. But if you could like, or sometimes I open up the window and I put it in the window so that with the window open for like an hour and it's dry. That's a good space. Yeah, I mean, it's good. But I feel like most people probably have like some sort of porch, balcony, something like that. And you just leave them outside, especially if it's a sunny day. They're dry in an hour. Boom, you go skating right after. But I just don't go skating on my laundry days. So 
All right, we got to make that official. We got to make that official top tip. Jump Street official top tip. Intuition there liners, go. go in the laundry with your skate pants and your stinky socks. You don't have any problems with uh, the pulling. So I was using this essential oil to try and kill the smell on a pair that I had. And like the liner separated from the like the material. No, no issues with that. I never heard of that. Never had that. Nope. My liners are as good as they are almost as the day I got them. And I've washed my, I have a pair of liners that I've been washing every time I do the laundry for at least like a year and a half. So they're good. Give it a shot. It might, you might be past that point by now. I was going to get a boot dryer. I wouldn't even bother with that. Just wash them, wash them. But you're, you might be past that point by now. If you have your intuitions to like two. These ones are getting burnt. Okay. So yeah. So next pair, start fresh. Next pair, start fresh. Jump Street top tip right here. All right, let's get into these super chats real quick. Of course, the classic Chad Hornish, nine ninety cents super chat. Nice little tip for us. Thank you, Chad. As always. Loyal man right there. Uh, Loyal. Scott Mack says, keep up the good work, dog. Shout out Wax Toaster. Your. Your Wax yeah. Toaster. <laughs> Anthony Armstrong with a super chat. Um, no question. You just just- with us, my guy. Okay, I just wanted to hit you off real quick. We got a super chat from Too Easy. Here. Jory, how does it feel Here. to be an official OG blader? Thank you, Billy. Oh, we had this talk. Thank you, Billy, for making me an OG. Why, how did you make him official? Did you knight him? Made me official. Did you knight him? Well, you know. We've been talking about. The- they, they asked, and I was like, well, yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> what defines an OG these days, then? I mean, you got to be it, an OG. Is you it know? age? Is it is it the amount of time you've been skating? It's, it's honestly, you just know. know what I mean? <laughs> when you know, you know. It's, yeah, but you also need it's the, just the, you it's just the individual. It, it, it's on a person-to-person basis. So, welcome to the gang. Okay, Joe. interesting. That's an interesting discussion. That, that's, like, that's like the discussion of what defines a hammer. <laughs> it's like there's no real answer to what defines a hammer. Just like... You can't really define an OG. There's no limit. There's no number to it. It's just right. you is an OG or you isn't an OG. That's it. I love it. I love and it. I <laughs> and you yeah. is. And you is, Joey. <laughs> All right. Super chat from, is this your buddy, Zeke? Yes, sir. Zeke Krabinski, what does rollerblading need less of? What a question. Oof. Oh, let me get this thinking man going on. Here we go. Boom. Stroke that beard. <laughs> There's some answers. Little question. I think it needs less. I like on an industry standpoint, it needs less people sticking around past their, not necessarily sticking around, but like people need to make room for the younger generation at this point. Like. Like I'm considered the younger generation. I'm fucking almost thirty. Like that's insane. Oh, like, you're not thirty yet. I, I thought you were at least no, thirty. No, oh, twenty eight. Damn. Twenty eight. And you're OG, uh, Billy. Fuck yeah, I'm OG. <laughs> twenty eight. Yeah, so right. I'm saying like I've almost been skating for twenty years, and like uh-huh. there's plenty of people that are younger than me that have them bunch of fucking talent and they don't get shine because there's people that are still living off this in like a different way i don't know man it's i think that it needs less of people staying past their prime in spots of influence not necessarily at a a pro level yeah at a pro level yeah and and i'm not saying that like you can't do it because clearly proscott was like what He's got to be close to fucking 40, right? I don't know. Mid 30s, right? at least. I don't know. Yeah. And he's still in his prime and he's still pushing the sport. But, like, if you're not pushing the sport, like, try and make room for the people that are trying to push the sport and have them get the support that they need. Like, I don't know. It's, been- it's so great that you, Bill, are supporting dom and levy and lewis and some of the other people that i don't think i'm allowed to mention yet but like 
And that's what we need. Not necessarily that we need less of people sticking around, but like we need more of support towards the younger generation. Yeah. And letting them feel like if you want people to be jumping off fucking roofs, give them a reason to do it. Like, it's not like these people don't have the ability to, but it doesn't seem worth it to a lot of them. No, I mean, um, it's been common I think... that that answer in our like a few questions. Sorry to interrupt you, Billy. I just wanted to say that that's like a common thing. So anybody who is watching like this is not just like one or two people saying this is like multiple people who have something to say about this, have an opinion about it. Completely agree. Completely, hundred percent agree that. Uh, That's a good answer, Joey. It's there's. It's like. You could look like, like uh, you know, Todd said blading was like golf. I think blading is like, it could be like, an an ancient pagan religion. Uh, it needs fresh blood to survive, you know. So we need to yeah, draw but it fresh also blood. Needs those grandmasters to push those younger kids and it doesn't always feel that way and it doesn't feel like the support system which is generally the companies are looking at the younger generation as new assets they're only looking at the old assets to continue making them money Mm -hmm. yeah and i think it's you know i i gotta say like part of me is like I'm, i'm i'm sympathetic in a way to like the other side because it's just like uh, companies don't want to like take people and kick them out when they're when they're when they're done being useful. But then yeah, but they, that's they, not what it but, should be. Yeah, exactly. It should, like, it should be something we can build. In. You're taking your knowledge and mentoring the next people to be you. Like we like at this like my generation doesn't seem like it's really gonna have a Billy O'Neill. It's not going to have a Broscow because they weren't put on the same way. They weren't get they weren't getting flown around the world the way that you guys got to do. Like they weren't given those opportunities. And that is what is I'm hoping will happen with the generation underneath me like hopefully they get the shine that they deserve and they get to skate with the people the grandmasters. They get to go on trips with those people and learn from them and move up the ranks. But this constant keeping my generation at like a pretty steady am is, it feels ridiculous. Mm-hmm. No, that sucks. And um, yeah, that sucks, man. Like, I, like I feel like, I, f- I feel for like the, the young generation i feel like the a lot of like the old guard needs to kind of get with it in, in some ways and and and, re, and revamp and redo new things you're allowed um, to keep your guard yeah like you should you should stick around like everybody should stick around like this is the best thing that's ever happened to me and it's the best thing that's happened to a lot of people but if you're not making room for the younger generation to flourish, then it's going to die with you guys Fox, or yeah. with that that group of people. Not necessarily, you know what I mean. Oh, like, yeah. Put me on the spot, Joe. Damn. <laughs> no, I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm saying that you're doing one of the better jobs out of anybody. Montre, doing a great job bringing yeah. up younger people. He's no, but we, do, we, we, we do need to continuously, yeah. and he's got a younger team. Like that's fucking dope. He's showing the kids that he thinks are going to be the next him how to be the next him, how to talk to people, how to go and travel. Like his icon team killed it. The Mesmer team did great. They showed up. Them. They're bringing up Marius and Parker. Like, mm-hmm. that's awesome. But there's some other companies oh, yeah. that aren't really doing that. Mm-hmm. I think I think it took a while for companies to get to that point. It, there was a few years, at least um, in more recent times, where, like you said, it was like people like you were like AMS forever. And I think that was probably like during the transition period of our sport to getting to where it is now. I think maybe companies were like confused about the skill level, like what's a pro now, what's not a pro now. 
And it's like unfortunate that people got stuck in that limbo, but it, it hurt a lot of skaters that should have got more shine and deserved it. And now in the past couple of years, companies realized that and the started big building. One is Cody Lantman. Dude. Killer. Cody Lantman. <laughs> yeah. He's a fucking killer. Killer. And he was doing something different for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it just didn't translate to the. I don't know, board members. I don't know what you want to call them, but like the people that are keep the keepers of the pro spots, like he, he's more pro than a lot of people. Like he's the fucking, like one of the best. And he knows how to skate, and, like actually yeah, skate. He has control. He's amazing at rollerblading and he never got it because of the position of skating and timing. I don't know. I just hope for my, the younger generation yeah. that they get it. Mm-hmm. No, totally. And, but I think also there's something skating is continuing to grow. There's new things coming out and, you know, like you said, Colin Kelso is a big inspiration uh, to you. He's a big inspiration to me. He's, he's 36 skating better than he ever has. Mm -hmm. I think he's skating better than he has now in his whole life. And that's something to to look at, especially at a time like during the growth of skating where things could be frustrating because, you know, for, for like you guys, you see like we got our generation like traveled all over, but we made some money. But like we also looked to like the people before us, like and they were like on TV and stuff like that. So it was like this uh, perspective of change with everything of, oh, man, they had it really good. And then, yeah, that's what it is. And where it looked at in this way. Um, but I think that skating is really smart now and it's at a place of a really good opportunity where the slate is kind of blank like it's you know it's funny like i used to look at blading like uh this it was like this thing that like blew up and then like uh kind of died but i i don't know i don't know if it ever did blow up i I don't know if it ever it ever happened like i feel like that thing was like something else versus not a blow up like we're still like a thing that's never been realized so if you look at it like that way, like potential wise, there's just so much there. So, yeah, I agree. It, it's every action sport kind of follows the same trend or not necessarily. Tr- like, I wouldn't call it a trend, but like a, an arc. So generally it starts with a core group and then it becomes it blows up. And then it falls down to basically the same amount of people that started doing it. And they keep it running consistently. And then it redefines itself and gets skilled. And then it slowly picks up steam and gets to another plateau. And then there'll there'll be a dip eventually and then come back up. It happened in skateboarding. It happened in biking. It happened in snowboarding, skiing, whatever action sport you're picking. Like, yeah. It, it's a natural thing the same way that stocks ebb and flow and like blow up and then find where they actually belong. Uh, mm-hmm. We're at a good place right now where there's enough participation and there's enough people that know what they're actually doing to make it so that the people that start now stick around. Definitely Joey, well this whole said. podcast is gold. There's so much good stuff here, and I'm learning. Um, we're we're so all I, learning. I'd people love is, it. Yeah, people love it in the chat too. Content for everyone. So um, we do have more super I guess chats we though. Keep going on with the super chats. Yeah, yeah, we got we got we got a lot in here, and like we say, half our super chats go to our guests. So if you want to support our guests and get your question answered by Mr. Yeah. Joey Lunger himself, the OG, the young OG. Yeah. Actually, some, I actually have to use the bathroom really quick too. Go for it. We'll, we'll get into this next question. Two and a half hours here. Okay, so we got a super chat from, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Thomas Tom Ancelari. You know him. Shout out to Joey, always being real and keeping rollerblading fresh. Glad we got to come up together, man. Skating in your garage will always be some of my fondest memories. Love you, man. See you soon. Love you too, dude. Those are some great times where I learned pretty much every trick just in my garage. Like I'm in a, little... a garage right now, actually. <laughs> the garage man. Yeah. It's a, this is where we drink beers and do podcasts sometimes yeah <laughs> there you my go room, my room's a fucking disaster and the light's not so good in there so 
The garage works out. I, we should yeah. do jump shit out of a garage. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can do the live wax toaster out of here. There you go. Let's do it. If I had a garage, I'd be in it. I don't have a garage, though. <laughs> New York problems. Uh, Danny Twitch. Uh, no, Jay O'Neill. I got Jay O'Neill here. Uh, love your skating. Here's some cash towards your next crime scene clothing item. <laughs> Didn't have to pay for this one, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely... The next one. Find some chalk lines and buy some clothes. That's a truly unique garment you have there. <laughs> sick, right? <laughs> That's so sick. Uh, okay, so here one. Here we go. Danny Twitch is what I'm talking about. Hello, my question is for Joey. When you first began skating, what grinds did you learn first? Also, what is your current favorite mix-up? Thank you. I don't know what mix-up means. Maybe switch up? Um, I like mix-up, though. It sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, I like that, too. Uh, <laughs> The first grinds that I learned were frontside, backside, uh, and then Mizu, classic. Mizu came from my natural backside. Uh, it took me a while to learn soul grinds. In hindsight, I probably should have learned it with my left foot, uh, based on my like my natural hip t- structure. Uh, but I do it with my right foot. You saw the opposite way of a Mizu. No, I think that I probably should have because that's the way oh. that I top soul. I top soul with my left foot and then I soul ground with my right. That's how I do it too. Yeah, you do it the opposite of me. Yeah. Yeah, you do it right foot top soul, left foot soul, correct? E, uh, left foot soul, right foot top soul. Yeah. 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 So, like, more of like a side skater. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's like a a concept that. I've actually been working on too for a while is like defining like people's naturals based on uh, like their setup. So there's like front side skaters or side skaters or unity skaters. And then like based on those, it really directs how you're going to move through skating. So say you're like, a, say you're a unity skater, like you're good at one of the like crosses and then crossing the other way is really difficult. So you would say you do a unity with your right foot in front, you porn with your right foot and then you acid with your left. And then everything else is based around that. Or if you're a front side skater, you would like soul with your right with your left and then sweaty with your right. Did I say that right? Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then there's people like us where like it's generally based on the side. So like I soul with my right foot, I top soul with my left. I front rail with my right foot. I back rail with my left. I back Nugent with my right. So it's all going to be on my right hand side, and then everything else like kind of flips around because of that. The unity concept you just said blew my mind. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, Broskow's the best at it. Is that how he skates? Yeah, he's left foot in front. So like, Korn is left foot. Mistral is generally left foot. Soul is right. Mm-hmm. Acid is right. And then it's all based on that. And so Savannah is that way. Ali porn is with his left foot. Like you're blowing people's minds here, Joey. This is why you're an OG. That's why I'm an OG. <laughs> That's why he's <laughs> an OG. He came back That's from Wizards. He came back from Wizards school, and he's an OG. Yeah, it's crazy because you questioned it on this podcast, and in the same podcast, he decided to <laughs> lay it down. Real, real quick. It's turned around real fast. Yeah. Let's Billy, keep moving. Which, we, which, what's your natural porn star? Um, right foot, but left foot's like pretty, like pretty. the same. Yeah, it's I'm super comfortable with the left foot. Yeah, like okay. both alley oop and everything, just because like the right foot leads it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your left foot true top porn is really sick. For the record. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm left true top. I'm like I'm honestly to be I'm gonna be straight honestly I'm getting inspired by this podcast and I'm like wanting to go out and like start, try to start reinventing my goddamn skating. Oh and I'm old can, as hell. 
Good. That's <laughs> what we're a looking dinosaur for. out here. Uh, what? To, to continue on that question, I think that everybody should learn front side both ways, backside both ways, and Machia both ways when they first start. The fundamentals? Machia both ways is important. That's crucial. Yeah, so yeah. based on all of those, you can more or less figure out every trick from there. Did you learn front side and backside on the same side also, since you're like a right side skater? No, I did not. That did not follow the rules, okay, because that's how no, I did it, it. No, I did I front side and back side with my right foot in front, but my right foot is my strong, so I learned front royale based off my soul grind. It's weird how all these tricks link up in different ways. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you learn certain tricks, you're going to be able to do everything. Like, if you have a strong backslide on both feet, you can figure out a strong backslide and a strong macchio on both feet. Every trick is possible. A strong backslide on both feet is just like, yeah, I can't understand that concept either. I've been trying to learn that. Even like a, even like a strong royale and a strong. Huh? You both have strong mistrials. You both have strong acids. Those are backslides. So, like, using that, like, Billy, you have a great Ali top acid, right? Thank you. You're pretty good Thank at Ali top acid? I, I could do that one. Yeah. You catch it with your left foot torque. Yes. So, like, in theory, you should be able to do, like, the, your opposite front savannah or ceviche, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. So every trick is another trick. Ceviche. Ceviche. I love this. Dude, <laughs> this is this is like the most deep breakdown of skating, and I love getting into like this is sick. Thank you. But do we do we have Look, any more super chats? Oh, we got a ton of more super chats. I don't think we're gonna be able to get to the regular questions at this point. Okay. But we Let's have see. another super chat from Zeke again, homie. It says, also what's your Taco Bell order these days? <laughs> Cheesy Ready to Crunch with a nacho shell, Baja Blast, <laughs> half Mountain Dew, the old Slimer. That sounds disgusting. It's oh amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> All this like epic smart shit he just said. <laughs> it went out, out the window. Out the window. Oh I'm my a god. Sucker for, I'm the sucker Mountain Dew you me. lost me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> if you've learned anything from this, Disregard it because I eat a lot of food. Everyone just lost all credibility with you with that order. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> okay, we have a super chat. Uh, another one from Thomas Ansarelli. But this one's to Bill. He says, When are you going to put Joey on the Mesmer team? Oh. Ooh. Yo. Probably I love not. Joey. I know. Probably I want to say, I love Joey. And I love Joey. And. There's no space. I love Joey. <laughs> Yo, if you want us to, right now we're keeping a small team it's because yeah. we want to pay, pay our guys really well. We didn't even know if we could do four. We're just doing three pros right now. We have four. And if you guys want to see me get more people on the team, buy more skates. Buy the support skates. the skates. Buy and, the if we, skates. and if we get more skates, then. We'll get more skaters, Bro. but right now I don't want to promise what we can't do. So that's all I'm going to say. Thanks for putting and me on the spot. I want What's his name? What's that guy's that name? <laughs> I want you to support the people that you have. You pick the right people to really grow a brand. So Thank especially you. the people on your AM team have uh, a lot of potential for moving. I love the AM team. I can't wait to announce the AM team. The AM team is like more exciting almost in a way because of I that. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really like, yeah. Okay, this, yeah. Thank you though. Thank you for putting me on the spot, my friend. That, that, that um, was, that was this guy, Tom Ansarelli, who threw a couple more bucks and said, "Buy some bug spray." I guess that I'm hoping that's for Joey. <laughs> yeah, it's probably for me. <laughs> okay, you know, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll ask uh, two more questions. I think that was the, all the super chats. So yeah, two, two more regular questions, um, from some of the people that watch this podcast frequently, and then we'll get into these sections um, really quick. So 
Um, we got to go with Montgomery Monsters. Always here in the Super Chats. I mean, not in the Super Chats. But they do in Super the chat. Chats, but always here in the chat. And they say, Joey, if you could watch only one skate video the rest of your life, what would it be? Wow. Able team video. <laughs> no, but that's, a, that's that's just like nostalgia. Uh, fuck. I, I want to say champagne. The one that I've seen the most is probably truth two. Yes. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Is because I would put that on when I got home from like high school, but champagne is probably the one that I would want to watch indefinitely. That's a good one, yeah. I don't know, I, I feel kind of on the spot about that one, and I'm probably gonna regret my answer, but like, I champagne, I, I feel good about just because that broadcast gas action's like I said, like almost flawless the size more size more section it's so beautiful Mm -hmm. uh it's one of the more interesting uh farmer sections that's happened in a long time all the the montages are really good and the filming and editing is great so yeah i'm gonna go champagne for now champagne's a good one solid choice um also before now that we're talking about skate videos and projects, um, we talked to you before the podcast and we said uh, there was something that we didn't want to neglect to mention that you're oh, working yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, so uh, we should talk about that really quick. Real quick, uh, Ian Walker is coming out with a new video called Crazy Pills. Uh, it's going to have sections from some real heavy hitters, including a short section of myself. Uh Danny Malm has a banger of a section. Uh, Philip Moore, you might see a little bit of Jeremy Spira, or a lot of bit. Uh, some other people that I can't really talk about. Uh, and then, of course, the one and only Jimmy Coburn is going to have a fucking banger. Woo! Bang! Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, and then, of course, it's Ian Walker, so the filming and editing is on point uh it's just a beautiful piece from what i've seen so far i think you've seen a little bit of it right yeah nope. um i was lucky to see uh jeremy spire he came to new york when i was there and i met with him at the local pub and he showed me some sections and it was really cool to see I can't wait to see the whole video yeah i can't wait either man because there's a lot that i haven't even seen like when does it come out yeah. Hopefully by the end of the year. All right, let's go. Crazy pills. Yeah, crazy pills, baby. Uh, Crazy pills. Monster. Sick. All right. We got a last uh, minute super. Take... Oh, we have we have two more super chats real quick. My bad, Billy. Hold on, those questions because these aren't questions. They're just super chats. Shout out to Tree Tree Rudolph uh, with the classic nine seven six super chat. Says Joey is incredible. I will not disagree about that. I don't think anyone else will. And then we have a super chat from Mr. Brant Pickup. Thank Brent you so much. Pickup, what I don't even know if he knows this, but he was my first Woodward counselor. Hmm. Like, did he you was know the, that, Brant? The cabin uh, counselor. How many times yeah. did you go to Woodward? Like four. Whoa. Five. Damn. As a camper? As a camper? As a camper, yeah. Whoa, damn. Yeah. Back in the good old days. Yeah. The first year I went, there was probably like 200, 300 skaters. And then by Damn. the end, there was probably like 20 ish, 30. Damn, within a four year span. Oh, yeah. Within the first two years, it took, it, I, I saw the oh, decline skating in just that. Damn. Brand did not, Brand did not remember that, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I was a fucking child. I was like eleven years old. Oh, we lost Billy. Oh, I'm we're fucking... we're both Billy. I'm Billy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know what happened with Billy, but uh, I was gonna ask him if he had another question lined up. 
But now that he is not here, let me see if I could find one real quick because that was his job. But if not, we will uh, end it because we have to go to the Patreon video too. But thank you everyone for sticking around. This has been a crazy good episode. Everyone's loving it. Um, and I think, oh, Billy's back. Hold on. I got to cut you out of here real quick. Hang on. Bam, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we're back. I took over your seat a little bit, Bill. I got kicked out. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I lost my question. Oh, I, I, I do have it up here, though. Hang on a sec. And this will be the last question before we uh, get going, unless there's any more Super Chats. No, not yet. Okay, so you know what? This will be the last question before we get into our watch a couple of sections with Joe. Thank you, Joe, for spending so much time with us. Not a problem. This has been a pleasure. It's how, awesome. long have we been, how long have we been chatting for? Just out of curiosity. Two hours, 45. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. What's this question, I, Billy? Danny Twitch says, question for Joey. When you first started doing grinds, what were the first grinds you learned? What is your favorite mix-up? I'm guessing switch-up. But um, I like mix-up. And first grinds you learned, that's a good question. Uh, we we uh, did that one earlier uh, when you were uh, using the old latrine. Uh, ah, yeah. shoot. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Okay, but, so... Uh, if you want to, if you want to hear, it was front side, back side, Mizu. Classic. Okay. And then, oh, uh, switch up. Uh, I really love soul back side. That one feels great. I I have a, a question here. Can I do the last question, Billy? Yeah, you can do the last question. I feel like but this before is... that, I just want to say, I just want to say this uh, comment by Jordan Williams. Love you, Joey. Your liners don't even smell that bad to me. <laughs> That's love right there. Jordan is kind enough to let me to stink my liners frequently. And, you know, he's lying, but I love you too. I <laughs> I love you and I love all of my friends at Too Easy. That you're just you're just the best. The if best. you guys haven't seen uh Up to No Good Go watch Up to No Good. I just watched it uh, three days ago just to get refreshed with it. Fantastic, phenomenal, entertaining uh, movie with all the guys and too easy and up to, you know, the whole crew. Sick. Before I get into this last question, I just wanted to shout out this random comment from earlier when we were talking about wax. Uh, Banana says, wax everything. I've used Vaseline, banana peels, deodorant, and helmets. How do you wax with a helmet? That's what was going to be my question. <laughs> and, and a banana peel. <laughs> but I just had a banana shot that when I, I was dying right. laughing reading that earlier in the in the podcast. But I found that this would be a very interesting question because it's I feel like it's something that people don't answer either honestly or they just don't get asked this. Uh, Romeo Stoshi says, what's the easiest way to beat you at a game of Blade? What's your weaknesses, Joey? Do you, can't do any of them i can like fudge them <laughs> so like in a game of skate they're not going to be consistent at all like not uh, first try i mean you can be you can do it he can, he can do it he said he can do it but it's his weak spot you can be fucking 12th try with the fish brain like i suck at them especially on ledges like i i am definitely a guide skater so like i use my h block to guide in my other foot regardless of whether it's my natural top side or my unnatural top side mm -hmm. uh so when there's no guide foot it's definitely not as consistent interesting a yeah. guide skater i'm learning all these new terms today look at this that. look at this a guide I skater break down. you need to write a dictionary a well, skate dictionary Apparently, Kevin Lee has a actual dictionary that I am unable to read because it's in Korean. <laughs> we need to translate this. Yeah, I I've, I've been trying to figure out how to do it, but yeah, he has like a breakdown of like movements and like a lot of what I do is like based off of 
like your feet, but he's really broken down like body movements as well. And I mean, you, you guys saw fucking Sola, like mm. she, that girl knows what the fuck is going on, and that's all because of Kevin. Of course, JK style is coming out in there, but <laughs> we we need a, a translator for this. I would love to see a, a skate dictionary. Yeah, I would love to read it as well. But this has been an amazing episode. Amazing. Tons of knowledge has been one. dropped. This guy's wearing a shirt that someone got stabbed in, has blood stains on it. I love Incredible. it. We had, we had top tips, blade knowledge. New terminology, new, lingo, new, new vocabulary, lingo. philosophy. One of the most educational the episodes. Oof. Wax Toaster. Do you follow Wax Toaster? You got to follow Wax Toaster right now. Watch all and the subscribe episodes. Subscribe to the YouTube. Cause subscribe to we, the YouTube. Hit the notification yeah, we want, bell. We'll link it in the description. We would love to do uh, super chats, but I think you need a yeah, thousand, thousand, right? thousand subscribers. Yeah, to go live. Yeah we're, yeah, we're not quite there. I think, I don't know. I don't know. That's all on Taylor's end. Dude, subscribe. It's so easy. It's you got a thousand subscribe. subscribers. Subscribe to, to, Wax, to Toaster. Wax Toaster right now. Hit the subscri- subscription button. Get them easy. a thousand. Get us 10,000. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. Did you like this chat? I love this chat. You can hear more of these chats at Wax Toaster. Yeah. Except without all these dinosaurs. I need a Jurassic I need a Jurassic Park theme song to play every time you mention dinosaurs <laughs> in the background. Dun, 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 dun. Y'all are coming on. Oh man, we are fucking sick. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Yeah. Stay tuned for but, the um, Jump Street Wax Toaster episode. <laughs> thank you so much. Um before we go um to do our Patreon special watching some of our some of your sections that we love to see. Um do you have any last words, parting words, shout outs to sponsors, shout outs to friends, people, anything you want to say to the community? Uh, first and foremost, shout out to my parents and my family. They're fucking awesome and they've been supportive through this whole journey. Like you guys heard, I went to Woodward a bunch of times and they've been there through the ringer. They've met more people than they probably should have. My mom's discussed politics with people, you know, that are in our community. It's funny, like how small the community is. And so that's amazing. Uh, shout out to all of my friends that I've met through this because I wouldn't be here without you guys. Uh, shout out to USD and Undercover for keeping my feet somewhat fresh for the most part. Uh, the Aeon is a great skate. Uh, under a couple wheels are the tits. Uh, uh, shout out to anybody that's filmed me or helped film or been around for that part part of skating for me. Um, and if you like skating. Try all aspects of it and expand your knowledge of it because it'll make you a better skater and it'll make your experience much more enjoyable. Well said. That's a good way to sum up and the whole episode. Follow the wax toaster. How can follow you forget? Follow the wax toaster. How can you forget? Well, Joey, we're going to do a a Patreon video with you after this, so stay on the line. Everyone, if you're part of our Patreon community, stay tuned for that one. Uh, But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to us. Subscribe to The Wax Toaster. Thank you, Blank, for sponsoring this episode. Everyone check out the new Sean Keen Pro Model Blank Skate. Give them a follow on Instagram at Blank Rolling Products. And we will see you guys on the next one. Peace, everyone.